City Field in New York. The New York Mets play the Philadelphia Phillies. Friday Night Baseball is presented by Jeep. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Jeep, now celebrating its 75th anniversary. By Geico, the number one insurer in the New York market. By Budweiser, the official beer sponsor of the New York Mets. This Bud's for you. By Optimum, presenting Mets games in crystal clear HD. And by your local Chevy dealers who are proud to support the Mets on their drive to the wild card. Well, it has been at times painful season for us, Drupal Cabrera, battling a recurring problem with his left knee that put him on the disabled list in July and August. But since he's come back, he's done quite a job on one leg. And last night, he was a walk-off hero with a world championship bat flip in one of the most incredible games the Mets have ever played at City Field. Cabrera provided the walk-off heroics. And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to City Field. Gary Cohen, Ron Darling, Keith Hernandez with you tonight as the Mets play game two of their four-game series against the Phillies. Last night, one for the ages for the Mets as they came from two runs down in the ninth, two runs down in the 11th. Reyes and Cabrera with the home runs. And as Drupal Cabrera has been an incredible story for the Mets since coming back from the DL in mid-August in a perfect pocket in the lineup between Reyes and Uena Cespedes, he has performed incredibly well. And uh, you saw the footage prior. The injury to the knee that knee is still bothering him he's playing with a compromised compromised knee he's in pain pretty much every day he has to be very careful when he runs but in those 32 games since coming off the DL he is hitting in a 365 clip 20 extra base hits nine of them home runs one of them last night that big game winner and 22 RBI he has been phenomenal he has been an inspiration as a player seeing a guy go out there with that kind of injury and that kind of pain and fighting through it and performing that's inspiring. Meanwhile there is the usual bad news about the Mets pitching staff the latest is on Noah Syndergaard who has strep throat and thus is going to be scratched from his start tomorrow. Sean Gilmartin will fill in tonight. It's Gabriel and Noah filling a spot in the rotation for his second big league start. Well he looked good in his last start pulled after four and two thirds innings so he did not get the win but he struck out eight all you're asking you know to do is exactly what Gazelman and Lugo has done really give you five plus innings maybe make it into the sixth and keep that score down he did it in his last start hopefully he can double up for the Phillies the veteran right hander Jeremy Hellickson's had a good year against the rest of the league but not against the Mets you know he's had a strange season you're right the Mets knock him around his first 15 starts ERA around five uh, a losing record but since then his last 15 he's eight and three Mets have nine games to go in the season they're sitting in the wild card position going into the night and they try and build off their big comeback win last night Mets and Phillies all the action on SNY.
local Tri State Kia dealers. Visit TriStateKiaDealers.com to learn more. By the Jet Blue Card. And by the State Farm agent of the game, John Garfinkel of Brooklyn. Contact John at JohnGarfinkel.com. Get to City Field this Sunday for Fan Appreciation Weekend in the final regular season home game of 2016 when the Mets play the Phillies. All fans in attendance will receive a 2017 magnetic schedule courtesy of Hyundai. Plus, all kids 12 and under can run the bases in the Mr. Met Dash presented by Northwell Health. For tickets, visit Mets.com slash tickets. Greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. The Chicago Cubs, 98th win today. Their most since 1945, the last time they were in a World Series. Jake Arrieta, seven tremendous innings. Helping out the Mets cause by knocking the Cardinals back. Cardinals are now a game behind the Mets in the wild card standings, which are brought to you by Empire City Casino, Mets and Giants tied for the top two wild card spots now. And the Cardinals with their loss today falling a full game behind the Giants play later tonight in San Diego. The Mets play the Phillies again here looking for a little more magic. It's the Mets and the Phils first pitch coming up from City Field. Deep right field. That goes Altair. Looking up at the wall. It's out of here. Jose Reyes ties the game with a two-run homer. And Cabrera hits yes. a deep right field. Back goes Borges. Near the wall. It's out of here. Out of here. As Drupal Cabrera wins it for New York. A three-run walk-off home run. The Mets' most uplifting victory of the season and an historic one. No team in baseball history had ever been multiple runs behind in the ninth, multiple runs behind in extra innings, and each time hit a multiple run home run to overcome the deficit until the Mets did it last night. Mm. Quite a night. Here's the starting lineup for the Phillies to not only one change Cody Ashey will play left field that moves Roman Quinn over to right field after Aaron Altair started last night. Ryan Howard's back in there after hitting a home run last night the 47th of his career against the Mets. Forget about the talent to hit those home runs. How about the first double out of here for the season Gary. Oh geez that was I was stunned. Seven games one start for Enoa. Outstanding his last time out. I know your moments, guys. Cesar Hernandez yes. takes low and inside, and we're underway. Hernandez was on base five times last night. Two for three, a triple, three walks, three runs scored. And Inoa finds the outside corner for a strike, one and one. Inoa made six relief outings before he started against the Twins on Sunday. 
Went four and two thirds innings, allowed one run, struck out eight. That was in the final game of that series against the Twins, which he pitched the sweep. Four and two thirds was disappointed. He was yanked. But here he is back out here again. He's earned a second start. And you remember Sunday against the Twins, the Mets played with a different kind of a lineup after they'd had a long game Saturday night. They didn't have Reed and Familia available, and Jerry Blevins got the save. Reed and Familia aren't available tonight, hmm. and the Mets have a somewhat different lineup tonight. That's hit down to first. Lucas Duda making the start at first base, flips 2 0 up for the first out of the night. Gary, you took my thunder away. I was all built up for the Lexus Mets defense. <laughs> With Duda at first, but Conforto's in right field. Curtis Granderson's back in center. And Lucas Duda is playing first base, getting the start. Kelly Johnson back in the lineup against the right hander. And Travis, Travis Darno hasn't played in a couple of days, is back in the lineup. It's the point I was trying to make before is, you know, the Mets played an offbeat lineup Sunday, and they kind of stole one yeah. from the Twins, a game they maybe had no business winning. And uh, they're pretty much in the same circumstance tonight after a dramatic win the night before, late into the night. Terry Collins going with a little different look today and a shorter bullpen. And we'll see if it works out for Enoa and the Mets again. Roman Quinn hitting second in the order and he fouls back the fastball nothing in two. You know we spend a lot of our time that's the Cubs uh, with Arietta's going seven innings got the Cardinals. We talk all the time about making adjustments. Keith you've made an outstanding adjustment on your defensive readings. Well outstanding. I get a little lazy you know but. Quinn grounds one to the right side Kelly Johnson's there to play it and there are two out. So two ground ball outs for Enoa and Keith highlighting the defense. And we know he's using his defense. Well, he's a ground ball. He's a contact pitcher, even though he struck out eight against the Twinkies the last time out. And in Triple A, he was not a strikeout guy. He's got a sinker, slider. He puts the ball in play, much like Lugo and Gazelman. You know, he made 25 starts for Las Vegas. He had a good year down there, 12 and 5, 3.97. And I frankly, didn't look particularly comfortable pitching in relief. Looked a lot different going out there as a starter Sunday. Well, they also tried to pitch him back to back a couple of days, and we're talking about a guy who started all year. Um, that's very difficult transition to make. Odubel Herrera hitting third in the order, and he takes outside a ball and a strike. You know, at just 23 years old, and in what is becoming a rotation full of irregulars. He is trying to solidify his spot. Two starts into his big league career and pitching enormously important games for the Mets. We mentioned it briefly during the open today the fact that Noah Syndergaard who was supposed to start tomorrow night will have to be pushed back probably to Monday or Tuesday in Miami because of strep throat. Mm. He had been away from the team a couple of days still not 100 percent in terms of his strength so the Mets are going to push him back. That's lined the other way a base hit for Herrera. And the Phillies have a two out base runner. Have we found out if Fernandez for the Marlins is going to pitch Sunday or be pushed to Monday against the Mets? They have not made that announcement, have they? I read yeah. somewhere, and I'm not sure if it was true or not, we'll have to check, that he might start Sunday and then not start again. That they might shut him down for the season after one more start. Now, they certainly could push that to Monday. Yeah. And that would be a cry foul from Cardinals and the Giants if in fact he could pitch against the Mets. All three teams obviously you all know vying for the two spots. Well his regular day to pitch is Sunday yeah. against Atlanta. So here's Mike El Franco. And he takes a slider outside. Area City problems for the remainder of this series. Sean Gilmartin will get his first start of the season. He'll be the 12th different Mets starter this year against Alec Asher, who was suspended for half the year. Robert Gazelman Sunday against Jake Thompson, the Mets' first look at him. I just have a feeling we're going to see Fernandez then on the I, I do too. first game. I do too. And he's death at home. Well, for right now, the Marlins are still listing him for Sunday. So yeah. we'll, we'll see. Michael Franco had a big three run homer last night that gave the Phillies the lead in the eighth inning against Addison Reed and sparked 
yet another comeback. The Mets came from behind three separate times last night. It gets lost in the shuffle. Cespedes drove in two runs, one in the fifth, one in the seventh, to get the Mets right. on top before Franco's home run, and then of course Reyes and Cabrera with the big home runs late. It was the only two runs driven in outside, but not by a home run, which has been the Mets' forte this year. You said something last night, Gary. Sometimes, you know, it doesn't resonate with me until after the broadcast, which makes me a heck of a broadcaster. But um, Mets have never come back this season until last night when they've trailed after eight innings. Yeah, that was the first time. Wow. It's hard to do. Which is amazing when yes. you think about it, especially the number of home runs they've hit, that they had not done that before. Speaking of home runs, uh, this hitter right here, Michael Franco, had a big three run home run last night. Yeah, he should have probably been the star of the game or thought he was going to be. That was quite a bolt over the right center field wall. A rare uh, bad outing by Addison Reed, who's been so solid. He will not pitch tonight, as Gary's already mentioned. Or will Familia, who issued a bases loaded walk to Franco. The runner goes, a huge jump by Herrera. And he steals the base easily. His 25th of the year. No, he's quick. It wasn't a great jump, but he's very explosive. So, a runner in scoring position with two out for Franco, who's driven 83 runs this year. No one behind him, three and one. And he goes after the slider out of the strike zone, three and two. And Travis Darno is thrown out a little less than 22 percent of the runners trying to steal against him. And A. Rivera, his backup, is over 30 percent. Three and two to Franco. Ryan Howard would be next. Herrera at second and two out. And Franco takes outside ball four, and so there are two men on with Howard coming to the plate. So a single, a stolen base, and a walk after two are out. And now it's the big guy who hit his 47th career home run against the Mets, the 380th of his career last night. Whoa, pitching coach out already in the first inning. This is last night. I don't throw it out over the plate. And down. He is a very strong man. 23rd home run of the year. Well, I think Dan Worthen is out to talk to Gabriel because Ryan Howard, to me, at this point in, in his career, uh, he can't handle the 95 plus, especially upstairs. He just doesn't have that bat speed anymore, but he does still feast uh, on the uh, pitchers who don't throw that hard. Well, Howard is now fifth on the all time list home runs against the Mets. They're trailing only Willie Stargell, Mike Schmidt, Chipper Jones, and Willie McCovey. He's one behind McCovey. His last 14 starts. He has seven home runs. So a big early moment for Gabrielli Noah, two out and two on. And Howard takes outside ball one. Willie well, Stargell still at the top of the list with his 60, but they're in the top five. And don't forget, Willie Stargell played in the days of Seaver, Kuzman, Matt Lack, Ryan, the, all those great power pitching Met teams. So that's impressive. Howard pops one up into shallow left. Sespin is toward the line, has room. And that retires the side. So we know he gets a big out of the opening inning and strands a pair. That's come to bat at the bottom of the first with no score.
Second starts is coming back for the disabled list. Michael Conforto will get the start in right field. Kelly Johnson in at second base after T.J. Rivera had held that down for a week and a half. But the top four guys in the order, they stay the same. They have been the uh, powder keg for the Mets as the Mets face Jeremy Hellickson for the fifth time this year. You know, as mentioned in the open, as you look at his Toyota numbers, that his first 15 starts not good. His last 15 have been very good. It, it came around the same time that Hellick Hellickson's name was mentioned almost with every team who needed a starting pitcher, and it looked like he was going to move, but he stayed all year long. Both teams with six left handers in their lineup. Two switch hitters for the Mets, three switch hitters for the Fighting Phils. Jose Reyes leads things off and takes a fastball low for ball one. Reyes's home run last night in the ninth inning, the first game tying home run. He's hit that late in the game in his career. Saying a chipper mood, sharing stories with Kerwin Danley. Cameron Rupp, uh, I don't think was amused. I mean, no. hmm. there's your umpiring crew tonight. Joe West, the crew chief, out at second base. He'll have the plate for the final game of the series Sunday. Well, Joe won't be laughing. I'll tell you. That. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> it's a different brand of humor. Reyes scored three runs last night. He's now scored 28 runs in his last 29 games. What a difference he's made at the top of the batting order. And he yanks that one foul. And we'll do the Coors Light defense quickly with the Phillies. Cody Ashey, who's had a tough year, is back out in left field. It's the first time he's had a start against the Mets in quite a bit. On the infield, well, Michael Franco, the future of this team, having a good year. Ryan Howard on his last leg at first base. Cameron Rupp behind the plate. 2 2 from Hellickson, and that's it in the air to shallow right. In comes Quinn, and he's got it for the first down. So one out and nobody on, and now last night's hero is Ruben Cabrera. You know, last night was the pinnacle for Cabrera. But it really mirrors what he's been doing for this team all year, and particularly in the six weeks since he came off the disabled list in the middle of August. He has just been phenomenal. And he pulls one down to first, off the glove of the diving Howard. And Cabrera's got himself another base hit. Nice effort by Ryan Howard. Couldn't make the connection, and Cabrera's aboard. No, nope, Howard. Never had much range, but that's for not bad for going to his right there, just out of his reach. Is that a ball if he leaves it alone that Hernandez has a yes. play for? Yes. It's got to be tough. And you know, Howard, as you say, has never had much range. But for first baseman to adjust to the idea of the second baseman being so close to them in those shifts. That there are certain balls that they might have gone for in the past that now they need to leave alone. Yeah, but I think from my feeling, if I see someone over that far, I know I don't have to go to my right at all, basically, Gare. You know, just go to the bag. Cespedes, who, as you saw, has great numbers against Hellickson and takes on the outside corner. It would take all the fun away from me going to my right. I wouldn't like the shifts. It was fun going to my right. Well, they wouldn't have to shift as far if you were playing first base. But you used to push Wally up the middle anyway, though, right? Oh, well, and tough. Yeah. Tough resisted for running three months. I pounded that out of him. I got him to move up the middle finally. <laughs> Get out of my way. Cespedes <laughs> lifts to him foul, and it's 0 2. Cespedes 3 for 4 last night. Drove in the tying run with a fifth inning single, drove in the go ahead run with a seventh inning double. Have had two such disparate experiences the last two nights. On the precipice of a huge comeback win night before last, only to have Cespedes robbed and then pulling it off in last night's game. What a 
altitude assessment. And I'm wondering as a player, when you experience those highs and lows, or in this case, lows and highs, especially late in the season like this, where every game is of great import, do you feel that? Do you feel the carryover from that? Or does that not exist? I think a stretch run eliminates everything Gary whatever if you're on a if you're on a ride and, and then you just keep that whip you go to the whip and you keep it going if it's a stretch run it, it basically eliminates everything because it takes away all the individual and you have one goal you've been you've been going at it for what six of five months there's nothing better than a September where every game means any everything. So what happened two nights ago doesn't deflate you. For the next that was night. a tough loss. Let me tell you something. They showed me something how they won the game last night. If they had lost last night, Gary, I don't know if they picked themselves off the ground. Yeah. That, was, that would have been a devastating loss after the loss of the Braves and getting swept and then losing here with their two big guns, uh, Reed and Familia. Familia would have sucked up the loss. Uh, I think and that would have been two losses in a row with your closer. I think that would have been a tough one to pick yourself up. And the vultures would have been circling too. It makes it tough. Opted up at his shallow right and overcomes Hernandez to the line to get it. And that's the second out. Don't you agree, Ron? That would have, I, been, a, that would have been a tough loss. I totally agree. I think that uh, you know the 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 record of the teams they were facing was supposed to be. An epiphany for them. It's become a little bit of an albatross yeah. <laughs> for them. Right. It's very strange. You know, it's like, you know, these teams are not good. We should just throw our gloves and, and automatically win. But there's a lot of guys on these teams that are that are trying to get a job for next year. So there's more pressure on the Mets almost. There's Granderson. Curtis got the Mets started last night with a two run homer off the foul screen. 29 home runs now for Curtis and he fouls that one away. The, the interesting thing about you know, the Braves and now the Phillies is you look at their overall records and you say well these are not good teams and yet you look what they've done more recently last month last two months last three months and they're not the pushovers that their records would appear to indicate. And, and also the Mets are not the Chicago Cubs you know it's, right. it's not like they are um, without their Issues also. Right. It's one of the things that makes this wild card race so <laughs> fascinating is that all three teams that are competing for these two spots have some fatal flaws. And now it's the question of who can overcome them. Well, you've you've got parity, and uh, as parity means, you've got both leagues with a lot of teams vying for two spots. Hey. You know, the Phillies and the Braves are, uh, are a lot in the same boat, aren't they? They're they're trying to prepare for the future. They both changed managers, right, and uh, have gone to a a manager, a new manager who's going to uh, look like he's going to be here for a while. Change up gets Granderson, and Hellickson has his first strike out of the night. So Hellickson works around an infield hit, and we have no score after one at City Field.
Phillies at 710. And the first 15,000 fans in attendance will receive a Mets fleece blanket right on time, courtesy of the Northwest Company. For tickets, visit Mets.com slash tickets. Cameron Rupp leads off the second. I say right on top because it's supposed to get cool tomorrow night. It might be a night where you might want to use a fleece blanket, which you receive when you come through the gates. You're on top of that weather, I'll tell you, bro. Hey, we have to dress accordingly. That's right. And as you know, that's cued foul by Rupp, and it's 0 and 2. Some of us get cold very easily. <laughs> that's right. The thin skinned ones. Yeah, well. <laughs> those of us of the Nordic persuasion. <laughs> Something like that. I'm the one who should get the coldest, the quickest, don't you think? Why? Oh, my people are in sarongs half the time when, you know, <laughs> 100 years ago. Rupp hits one slowly. Reyes charging, gloves it, and throws out the catcher. Slow footed as he goes. One out. Your East Coast power and gas replacement Mets pitchers. And uh, so far, so good for this trio. Enoa, Gesellman, Lugo. They tried Montero a couple of times in that spot. John Neese filled in for a while before he got hurt. I mean, so it goes on the board, but Lugo last six oh. starts. They're 6 and 0, the Mets. Jeez. I thought that was yesterday. Well, I think the um, the teacup dogs are, are always a bud. That's. I may be just making that up. <laughs> Galvis rolls over one that goes foul nothing in two. I mean if you can fit them in your bag. Oh wait a oh. second. Wait a second. You're gonna, we got to remove uh -oh. the dog. Here. You're not taking my dog. A, a dog without official approval. You can't bring a dog to the ballparks. Well on dog day you can. It was dog day up here on Wednesday night. So uh, our cameras pretty much busted them. There were, I feel really bad for the dog. I think our director should feel bad. <laughs> He's remorseless. A little blooper, shallow left, and that'll fall in for a hit for Freddie Galvis. So a two strike hit for Galvis. And the second hit against Gabrielle Noah. Yeah, both the other way. Trying to come inside, bleeds a little bit. No, he got in there. Just a jam shot and a fortunate hit for Galvis. So one out and one on and now Cody Ashley the number eight hitter. Ashley came off the bench and pinch hit last night went 0 for 1. Lifetime 241 hitter who has struggled even more so this year. Uh. That's with three infielders on the right side Reyes flopped over to the right side of the diamond diamond. The obvious 14 stolen bases this year. The Phillies do some running. They're in the top half of the National League in stolen bases. They already have one tonight. Ooh, reprieve from the governor. Mm. Those little dogs, when they snip at you, boy, they're going to put a bite on you. <laughs> Their teeth are so small, Keith. Oh, well. That's lined into center field, a base hit for Ashy. Galvis pulls in at second, and the Phillies have back to back hits from their seven and eight hitters. This is a nice swing by Ashley right back up the middle. So first and second and one out. Now the pitcher Hellickson, who is not a lead pipe cinch to bunt, he's got a pretty good swing. He's a he's a good a good athlete, great athlete, high school basketball player, um, but he also is probably we we. Illustrated how good Julio Tehran is as a bunner for the Braves. He's the best bunner for this ball club. He's bunning, and the Mets aren't aggressively challenging on the corners. Ellickson has eight hits and eight sacrifices this year, and he does show bunt. And with Duda charging hard, he takes outside ball one. If you want to do this at a very high art form, you get to a point as a pitcher that you can throw it almost on the run. Right down the middle, and you sprint to that third base line and try to intercept the bunt. I'm sure that works better when you have an experienced third baseman yeah. who knows when to charge and when to go back to the bag. And 
Reyes's case, he hasn't handled too many of these. You know, I always tried to throw a strike early and let the guy put the ball in play because we had guys that were so aggressive. I didn't want them to have to run three and four times. And Ellison mm -hmm. misses on the bunt attempt, and now it's one and two. And little Duda breathing down his throat. Now Duda is so much more aggressive than anybody else the Mets have playing first base on those bunts. I like that number, 21. It's a good looking number. Cleon Jones. Then it has a lot of hits in it. And Hellickson mm. strikes out trying to bunt. That's the second out, first strike out of the night for Enoa. I think Hellickson would tell you this is a pretty bad effort. Mm. Stabbing. Do it on the left of your screen. That's putting the little heat on the pitcher. He has to get, you're forcing him to get that bunt down the third base line, which is what he's supposed to do anyway in a first and second bunt situation. No, no, but once you have two strikes, you're just trying to get it down. Then you say you like that dude a number. I wonder if there'll be a day when that number will no longer be used. 21. Isn't that Clemente's number? Oh, there has been a movement afoot in baseball. Right? That is true. To retire the number, much as Jackie Robinson's is across the game. That's been going on for quite some time, that effort. Cesar Hernandez with two out of two on. A good changeup from Inoa to start him off. By the way, as you look at the changeup by Inoa, did you see that camera angle we used to show due to charging a moment yeah. ago? That's a new camera angle. I, I think it's spectacular. That is, that's great. Is there someone up there on that camera? It would have to be somebody who uh, does not suffer from vertigo. That's rusty wouldn't be up there. I guarantee you that. There it is up on the top of the score. It's all by its lonesome. It's like a robotic camera. It's like a it's like a drone. It's not a guy. <laughs> <It's a drone>. <laughs> <laughs> Hernandez takes it just off the plate and it's one and one. And there's Al down there, an old camera. What are, what's that? What's Al's number two? Uh, my camera two. You're just always stuck there, Al. That same shot. <laughs> it's like an old shoe. <laughs> one one coming, and Hernandez Whoa. cracks one in the center for a base hit. Galvis around third. He'll come in to score, and the Phillies take a one nothing lead. Three hits in the inning. Cesar Hernandez drives in his 38th run, and it's one nothing Philadelphia. Well, I think Enola is going to have to start pitching inside to these left-hand hitters. He's running that fastball away, and if you don't get them worried inside, that's the three. These three rips are going to happen. And he doesn't have to always do it with a fastball. He can do it with a slider down and in, but just something uh, that changes the scenario for these hitters. Hernandez has had himself quite a season. Hernandez has now reached base in 28 straight games. He's hit in nine straight games. And now Roman Quinn bats with first and third and two out. Quinn grounded out to second base his first time up. And he takes it at the knees for a strike. Mm. Get it up, I'd have to tell uh, Mr. Dan, Mr. Danley. Ashley is on third, and Hernandez, who's a base dealer, is on first. 17 steals this year for Hernandez. Noah is now giving up four hits to the first 10 batters. That's the pitch I was talking about that slider down and in. Good pitch. Now he should pop one like you said Keith. pop one inside off the plate. Yeah, he's way off the plate so you can really put one in there and not get hurt. Just let, let him. He's going to go away. Ooh, pulled down to first and underneath Duda and into right field and that'll bring in another run. As she scores going first to third is Hernandez. Roman Quinn drives in a run with the fourth hit of the inning and it's two nothing Philadelphia. And we'll see how long Terry it takes Terry to get the bullpen up here. And not going to want to let this game get away. Every game so 
important. You kind of want you don't want to go into your pen so early, especially when you know that your your best two relievers aren't available tonight. It's always death for a pitcher, especially in the National League when the seventh and eighth place hitter get on. Well, he's got his left-handers out there that he can use today because there's a lot of left-handers in the lineup for the Phils. Well, is one of his left-handers he has to save for tomorrow because Sean Gilmore is starting tomorrow. Night. Right. So it's it. I mean, despite the 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 numbers in the Mets have plenty of numbers in that bullpen. It, it gets short quickly tonight. Dubal Herrera at the plate, single to left, and stole a base in the first inning. Five hits now against him, no in an inning and two thirds. First and third and two out. There goes the runner, and the Mets will let Quinn go. His fourth stolen base of the year and the second stolen base for the Phillies tonight. And that's it's just you got to pay attention. That base hit now is two runs. And it's four nothing. It's a lot of speed in this Phillies lineup. Hernandez, Quinn, Herrera, Galvis, they all run. Seen it too much. So now two in scoring position. A one and zero count to Herrera. And he takes the change up off the plate. Two and out. First man up in the men's bowl. I check the count. It's two and one to Herrera. Herrera, the Phillies All Star this year, is having a rough second half until just recently. He hits that one well down the left field line, slicing away toward the corner. It goes foul. It's almost like he's geared to hit the ball the opposite way. Likes the ball. When you're open as much as he is and closes the way he does, he's trying to work that ball up the middle and the other way. He might pull the breaking pitch. Somebody's barbecuing. Keith's grill. Hernandez at third, Quinn at second with two out, with two runs already home in the inning. 2 2 coming. Slapped down to third. Reyes backs off, has a long throw to make. On target, good stretch by Duda, side retired. But not before the Phillies cash a pair on four hits. They lead 2 0 in the second.
tweet us at SNY TV. What's the most exciting play to end a game? A walk off homer, Hail Mary pass, last second hoop, overtime hockey goal? Mm. What do you think? Kelly Johnson leads off the home second. Did we did we mention penalty kicks? Oh, I know. That's the worst way to end a game. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a soccer fan. Well, they also have the shootout in the regular season, right? For the uh, for the hockey, but you're talking about the playoffs. Playoffs. Kelly yeah. Johnson first starts in Sunday, getting 2:45 for the year. T.J. Rivera has been holding down second base, made nine straight starts, but T.J. struck out three times last night, and Mets coaching staff's a little concerned that he's gotten wrapped up in the home run ball. After hitting three, I don't think it's that at all. Roll toward the middle of the diamond, backhand play by Hernandez. The crossbody throw, and he got him. Wow. That's a tremendous play by Hernandez, who had to go far to his right to get to that slow ground ball. This kid got some skills, doesn't he? It's a heck of a play here. It's all about the arm getting the mustard on that throw. Very nice. So you were saying about TJ? I don't think it's a, he's he's getting happy with the home run. Just think that they're starting to mix pitches up with him a little bit. Uh, before he was getting fastballs, and um, now they're pitching him a little more carefully. They have to. He's taking got to take notice. He's hitting three high three hundreds. Just yeah. can't just okay. There's a guy from AAA. We just threw this and this. They got to, they're they're pitching him as if he's a ten year veteran. He's starting to mix it up, pitch him tough. Michael Conforto getting the start in right field tonight. Michael's had a couple of pinch hitting assignments the last two nights, drawing walks each time. Traffic on Shea Bridge. Hmm. Some of them are watching the game. Folks, you pay you for a seat and you're wandering. I think that's the way the ballpark is designed. It's always nice to have a bridge in New York without a toll. <laughs> 59th Street. But I, I'm on that all the time. Third Avenue Bridge. Get off in the right lane. Hang right on 60th Street. <laughs> when you go, well, you probably don't do it as much. But when you go from the Bronx to Manhattan, or or vice versa, yeah. do you take the Triborough and pay, or do you take the Third Avenue or the Willis Avenue and go for free? Of course, for free. Come on. <sighs> The money you make. <laughs> That's driven down the right field line by Conforto, and that'll go to the corner for an extra base hit. And Conforto pulls him at second base with a one-out double. Now that's some thunder. 20th double of the year for Michael Conforto. Now don't think too much. Just keep doing it. Nice, nice swing. Eye on the ball, fat of the ball, line drive, line drive. Well, we've talked a lot in recent days about the Mets waiting for Jay Bruce to break out. Maybe this is the guy who breaks out for the final week and a half. They've been waiting since April for that. He's sitting again tonight. Here's Lucas Duda, who barely missed a game winning home run in the 10th inning last night. Inches foul. Wouldn't that have been something if they hit that home run and won the game? <laughs> well, it's Lucas's fourth at bat since the middle of May. Shoot a bomb. <laughs> nice. Oh. That must be a softball team. Maybe they will retire the number <laughs> for the Duda bomb. That's right. Lucas against Hellickson, four for nine with a home run. Very looking for a spot to get him in against a pitcher he's done well against and last night's at bat certainly showed that the rust is shaken off a little bit. Well Lucas is in fine shape as far as his weight he looks fit and trim. Tanned and rested like they used to say about Billy Martin every time he came. Tanned and rested. Tanned and rested. Tanned and rested. <laughs> Looking for right up in the Mets bullpen due to hitting seventh in the order. So 
That's Mel. It may well pinch it early in this game. Down two nothing in the second. Could four to with second and one out. Ellison should throw an 0-2. Pound him inside off the plate. No nope. change up in the dirt. Two in a row. Well, Hellickson's got to be everything so fine. He's got to nibble, and I'm not saying that disrespectfully. He's not an overpowering guy. Uh, he's a guy that you can measure, and he wins. But if he's not fine with his pitches, he's going to get clobbered. And he's very good at getting ahead in the count and getting you to chase. He knows exactly what he's doing out there. Not against the Mets so far in his career. Almost historically bad against the men. Mm. One and two to Duda with Darno on deck. Lucas takes up and away. Among pitchers who have made at least st six starts against the Mets, Hellickson's 7.58 ERA is the second highest in history. The only pitcher who had half a dozen starts against the Mets and had a higher one was Mike Thurman, who did some pitching for the Expos back in the 90s. He was at 8.61. So this is the guy the Mets have gotten to back in his Arizona days last year and as a Philly. Curveball pulled and caught by Howard. And back to second goes Conforto. So Lucas got a good swing at it, but lined it out for the second out. Ryan got no pocket on that. I think that got him right. Oh, that right hurts. in the palm. Oh, man. Yep. That's like getting a spanking. Hurts. So a couple of hard hit balls against Hellickson here in the second. Conforto at second, the two out for Darno. Travis this season hitting 118 with runners in scoring position. Ty Kelly is coming out on deck, so Terry's showing his hand. If Darno keeps the inning going, he will pinch it for Eno in the second inning. It's that time of year. <laughs> Patience non existent. No. Big cut by Darno, nothing in one. Darno's first start since Tuesday night against the Braves when he went 0 for 4, and there are those runners in scoring position numbers, which are almost unbelievable. 14 runs batted in in 240 at bats. And Darno lines one toward the left field line. Ashy racing over. Can't get it. It's to the wall. Conforto is in. Darno into second. He's got an RBI double. And it cuts the Phillies lead to two to one. Like an albatross removed from Travis Darno. Only his 11th extra base out of the season. Change up. Not a wise pitch. First RBI in September. Now she could try. Just doesn't have the traditional kind of speed you need for an outfielder, infielder by trade. So the Mets with a pair of doubles by Conforto and Darno played a run in the bottom of the second after the Phillies took the two nothing lead. First RBI in almost a month for Darno. Bob McClure, the pitching coach, out at the mound talking to Hellickson as Ty Kelly is announced as the pinch hitter. Switch hitter will bat for Enoa, who's done after two innings in his second big league start. Enoa allowed two runs and five hits. And the Mets will have a deep bullpen day. Rafael Montero looks like he'll be on in the third. Every day. Yeah, just a little earlier than normal. Yeah. Last night the Mets used 10 pitchers which tied a club record among the 27 players which set a club record. Well and the curveball misses to Kelly. I agree with this move. And now it's 
Logan Verrett up in the Mets bullpen. So it looks like Verrett will come on in the third. Garneau at second and two out. And Kelly takes a knee high strike, one and one. Foul and it's one and two. Well, the Mets battle in the wild card race. The team at the top of the National League East is close to clinching that title. The Nationals could clinch tonight with a victory and a Mets loss. Their magic number is two. Daniel Murphy is out of the lineup again for the Nats. I think it's the fifth straight game. What's wrong with him? Strained buttocks is what they said. Gluteus Maximus. I think that was a rhetorical question. You saying he knew the end? Oh, yes, he did. No, I didn't. Like a good lawyer. Well, from a moral. I'm always the last one to know. <laughs> we can change that if you like. We'll put you top of the list. But from a purely practical standpoint for the Nationals, obviously they need a healthy Murphy no, to get into October. That's why they're. Sitting him down, they need him for the postseason. One and two to Kelly. Reyes would be next. And Ty takes upstairs two and two. One of the uh, delicious pieces um, that might come to pass tonight for the Nats, if they were to be in a clinching situation in the ninth inning, who would be closing the game for them in Pittsburgh? Melanson. Melanson, that's right. Oh, good call here. Yeah. You know, I think one of the most important things for Washington tonight and the next start is what they get from Gio Gonzalez. He could play a big part if they have to face the Dodgers. Sure. They've been a little vulnerable to left handed pitching. Very vulnerable. Yeah. The Dodgers are the lowest numbers in all of baseball against lefties, but there is not a lot of left handed pitching looming in the postseason. Lester and Gonzalez, and that's about it. 2 2 coming to Kelly. And it's at his feet with a slider. And it's 3 and 2. What's he want to do? Does he want to face Kelly or does he want Reyes? Jeremy Hullickson's last start was his best of the year. He threw a three hit complete game shutout against the Marlins last Saturday. Didn't walk a batter, struck out 500 and. Uh, 106 pitches. Mets have always done a good job against him, though, of spitting on those pitches out of the strike zone. He wants you to swing at balls out of the strike zone. That's his game plan. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming to Ty Kelly. And he walked oh, the ball. Boy. Doing a 3 2 changeup, and so now we'll have to face Reyes with two men on. I don't get that pitch at all. I don't know, there's a lot of pitches I don't get anymore. Everybody tries to trick you. It's now he's got to deal with this uh, this young man. Ray is flying out his first time up, but he's had Hellitz's number over the years. Ten for twenty-eight with a home run. So he's hitting 357 against Hellitzen. Right now it's second. Kelly at first with two out. Mets have a run home here in the second. Takes a little high ball one. And uh, ball inside two and out. Oh. Cabrera waiting on deck. Billy's well, got two runs in the top of the inning off Enoa, who's now out of the game. That's cashing one against Hellickson here in the bottom. 2 0 to Reyes, and a change up for a strike. 
loves his changeup. He's a uh, just a, just a baseball term. We'd call him a junker. A junker. <laughs> Not a yunker. Junkaroo. Or a yunker. <laughs> His 42nd pitch already here in the second. And that fastball was off the corner, much to the dismay of Reyes. He fell to his outside. Now it's two and two. Well, they were joking before the game, not joking now. That's right. That ball's out outside. Might have been low. Don't even have to see it. Two out, two on, two and two to Reyes. And Jose slaps one to the right side, Ryan Hernandez. And that ends the inning. So the men settle for one run on their Darno RBI double. They trail 2 1 after two. Chisholm, Bronx native who plays for the Harlem Globetrotters. Had some fun with some of the Mets before the game. Jim Henderson, Eric Campbell, learning some of Cheese's tricks. Cheese who played his college basketball at Ball State. Watch Cheese fake Suck Campbell out. Watch. Here it comes. <laughs> That's the old Metal Lark Lemon Okie Doke. That's right. Yeah. Well, the Globetrotters, big part of the uh, SNY Play Ball Initiative. And Cheese is in town to uh, do some work with that throughout the first pitch tonight. Logan Verrett will pitch for the Mets in the third inning. Bullpen by ad hoc committee tonight here with, yep. you know, only going two innings. A lot of middle relievers will be in this way go. Verrett last pitch Monday night, a scoreless inning against the Braves. A chance to start earlier this year. It didn't go well for him. Actually, the first two yes, starts this year went very well, but after that, it, it kind of went south for him. And so now filling a role in the bullpen late in the year. Two and out of Franco, and he hits a rocket mm. to deep left center. Forget that. That is way, way out of here. Michael Franco, well over the great wall of flushing for his 24th home run of the year. Well, he's a strong man, is he not? He gets, takes a full hack. Two and oh count, middle of the plate here. It's only the second and two nights for Michael Franco, and the Phillies now lead three to one. I don't think he's a guy you can necessarily throw a strike to, Ron. Yeah. Once you get behind, though, and you have to give in to him, he's uh, well, like most hitters. He's going to put a good swing on it, and he's got some pop. Oh boy. Yeah, he got it. 
He hit the cheese chisholm out of that. <laughs> Needed to throw up the water bucket with the confetti. Now Ryan Howard. He takes a rip. Nothing at one. Howard flat out to left with two men on to end the first inning. Well, how did that home run look from on top of the scoreboard? Scoreboard was the scoreboard camera was quick. Now it gets jammed and fouls it off. So Gabriel Noah went two innings, allowed two runs, five hits, a walk, a strikeout, 43 pitches, and with uh, Syndergaard's availability. Uncertain right now, coming back from strep throat. You know, if we come back in a day or two, if necessary, that's lifted out to left, and Cespedes doesn't have to move an inch. One out. Any of you guys ever had strep throat? I've never had it before. I don't know what the uh, protocol, how long it takes. I had it, but yeah. it was a long time ago yeah. when I wasn't an adult. Antibiotics, a lot of rest, yep. a lot of fluids, fever. Yeah, I mean, feverish. It was it was fascinating listening to Terry Collins during his pregame press conference when he made this announcement. At first, you almost thought he was kidding when he said, "I have an announcement. No, oh, Syndergaard was not going to pitch tomorrow night." Yeah, yeah, ha ha, right? Yeah, yeah. But he was serious. <laughs> Strep throat. He said, "You know, you writers, you you guys, you catch everything. You never miss a beat." Did anybody notice that Syndergaard wasn't here the last two days? <laughs> <laughs> I, that's got to give him such joy to. to, to Move the needle. It's very hard to hide anything around here, so it was hidden for a couple of days. And when Noah came in today, he's still very weak, and they figured there's no chance he can pitch tomorrow. So they're figuring Monday or Tuesday in in Miami. And what that sets up is that in some order, Syndergaard and Cologne will work those first two games in Miami, and that sets them up to work the last two, two. games of the season, yeah. Saturday and Sunday, in Philadelphia, if necessary. Of course, what you hope is that the Mets will have nailed down a wild card spot before Sunday, so you can yeah. save one of those guys to then pitch in the wild card game. Well, today's clubhouses, you can be in the weeds all day long. You don't have to see any reporters if you don't want to, unless you have to. One, two to Rupp, and a half swing on the slider. He went around for strike three. So Barrett has his first strike out, the second out of the inning. Just that Noah's a very large presence. <laughs> it's hard to miss. Well, the other thing you always see Noah because he's always working out like a maniac, so you always see him on the field and doing his sprints. Two out now, Freddie Galvez, who blooped a single to left to get the two run second inning started for the Phillies. Phillies put together four hits in a span of five batters against Inoa. And Barrett skips one in there for ball one. It's a tough run to give up, huh? After you get one run back, you always want to run a goose egg up yep. when your team scores. Be another one of those games, guys, where you're going to have to win it. Six five, seven six, or last night was what? Nine eight. Nine eight. Two of the lowest scoring teams in baseball, and they played a nine eight game. It's like Joaquin Andujar said, you can sum up baseball in one word. <laughs> you never know. That's three. Not to Joaquin. We used to call him Jack. <laughs> one and two to Galvez. Well, Verrett's made 12 starts this year overall. This is now his 23rd relief outing. And, you know, it's got to eat at Logan that the, with Syndergaard pushed back tomorrow that he doesn't get the call. And instead, Sean Gilmart, who's yet to start a game in the big leagues this year, will go instead. 
One two. Young styles it off. I mean, uh, you don't know exactly what happened, but it's really easy to recognize when Logan's at his best. He's very aggressive. His fastball command is impeccable, and it allows him to throw a slider anytime he's behind in the count. And he had an ability to put hitters away with it also. That went away. Galvez with an emergency hack stays in there. Well, the Red had a start against the Phillies back in April. That was just a gem down in Philadelphia. Went six scoreless innings. He had another very successful start right before that against Miami. And Galvi strikes out on the slider in the dirt. And the Red picks up back to back strikeouts to finish off the third, but not before Michael Franco put one into orbit. His second home run in two nights is 24th of the year. Now 3 1 Phillies as we go to the bottom of the third at City Field. In HD on over 400 supported devices. MLB.TV Premium includes a free subscription to add that premium. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. There are things at Shake Shack. How long is that line? Mm. Two innings, three innings? They can all go over to my peace place. You feel free. Which is great, especially if you order the Mex burger. But there's one problem. What? You don't have the shakes. That's true. And that's what part of what makes Shake Shack. Shake Shack is the shakes. Well, when you guys have your organizational and business meetings this winter, right. you'll be able to bring that up. I'll, I'll lobby. Or I'll pull my funding away. Oh, they're doing fine there. <laughs> Down to first base, and Howard makes a slick grab and flips it to Hellickson, and Rare's retired one out. So. Rare who banked one off Howard's glove that time, went in the same direction, but this time Howard made the play. Ryan Howard early in his career really struggled on his defensive side. And then the Phillies hired Sam Palazzo, ex Mets coach, and he went over there and they worked together for the entire offseason and he made Ryan much better. Big Sam. Remember when Sam was our third base coach? Perlazzo. Yep. We gave him a hard time as rookie year. <laughs> Did we give him a hard time? <laughs> we had a tough clubhouse. We're just awful. <laughs> Did he replace Bobby Valentine when Bobby left? Or was uh, there somebody in between? No, Buddy had uh, replaced. Oh, yeah, replaced. Yeah. He replaced Buddy, I think. Yeah. Right. When Buddy took over as manager, or Buddy? Well, Sammy. I remember coach? Sammy was third base coach. Right. One year. 
Um, more, more than one year. You yeah, well, when I, last year. Yep. But he's, yeah, he stayed on when Buddy was manager. I remember in San Diego, uh, we won a close game and I scored on a pass ball or a wild pitch. And it wasn't that far. It went up the first base line, but I just got a great jump and Sammy said, no. Nope. But I kept going and guess what? I was safe. And boy, did I bury him in the half of that game. <laughs> <laughs> well, here are some uh, numbers that make you remember what happened earlier in the year. See those numbers for left fielders? Well, most of that was Michael Conforto early in the season. He was playing most of the left field. Cespedes, of course, was a center fielder for most of the first four months before he was moved to left field permanently to protect his quad. It was a call strike two and two. So the uh, you know that left field agglomeration of yeah. statistics is kind of a, it's a little misleading. Yeah, the 55th game started in left field for Cespedes. Out of 154. Right, 62, I believe, in center. Thanks that one. Foul. So with what nine game, uh, eight games left, you'll have 63 in left field because he's playing every day unless he gets hurt. 63 and left and 62 in center. Two two coming. And he grounds one down to third. Nice big hop for Franco. Two out. Curtis Granderson coming up tonight's cold hard facts brought to you by Clint Crisp Coors Light. Curtis Granderson with a home run last night. Seven of his 29 have come in September, which ties him for the most in the National League. Look at Trey Turner. You wouldn't think he'd ever hit seven in a month. I don't believe I did. What the hell's? What, excuse me. What the heck's going on? <laughs> Everybody well, did home runs this year. Well, in September 19 games, Curtis also has 15 RBI to go with those home runs. All the way Trey Turner he's also hitting 339. Mm. There's a call strike to Granderson. This is Curtis last night in the second inning. Fastball in and he turned. Right down the line. Jerry Rafferty here. That's what I remember. Lined and caught by Howard. That's the second line drive Howard's caught tonight. The Steelers wheel. Right after uh, Baker Street. <laughs> what a great album that was, huh? Let's go one, two, three in the third. They trail three one.
San Diego. Rookie Albert Suarez goes for the Giants. Veteran Edwin Jackson pitches for the mm. Padres. Jackson has actually pitched pretty well since mm. he got to San Diego. Better than that six ERA. Cody Ashley leads off in the fourth inning. Last night the Giants held on to win two to one. Sergio Romo getting his second consecutive save. So it looks like maybe the once and future closer will get that role now for Bruce Bowden. The only issue with Romo is he's a little man. So it's hard for him to pitch three days in a row like some of your bigger closers. Brandon Crawford out of the lineup again tonight for the Giants with that dislocated pinky that he hurt the other night sliding into third. That's ripped toward the gap in left center chasing over his Granderson to run it down. Nicely done by Curtis. Did a good jump on that ball off Ashy's back for the first down. He ripped. Curtis is, uh, can still motor. Just love those mechanics. If you saw him in center field, he had the crossover from his left leg over his right. No stepping with the right foot. That gives you a little extra jump. There's Jeremy Hellickson who struck out trying to bunt his first time. Oh, popcorn. Hey. I was right when I said that uh, Hellickson was a uh, good basketball player, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, because he's not a real tall kid. Grew up in Iowa. Well, he's a great athlete. He's won a gold glove. Pretty good hitter, even though he started his career in the American League. Rookie of the year in 2011. And Brett gets one at the knees, two and two. Second inning of relief. He was greeted rudely by Michael Franco home run. And he's retired four in a row. His 86 jerseys a big seller, Steve. Mm. Ground ball. Rare charging. Two out. Let's look at today's Verizon trivia question. Most career walk-off RBIs in Mets history. Mm. That's toughy. Now I can't answer that one, but I, I saw a note today that really took me aback. Now the Mets have hit four walk-off home runs this year, mm. which is pretty good, right? Yeah. Granderson hit a couple, Cespedes, and then Cabrera last night. The club record for walk-off home runs in a season is six. It's been done twice. Yes. I know the years. The two years were 1962 what? and 1963. Now 62 they hit. But think about it. Think about where they played in 62 and 63. They played at the polo grounds where you could hit a 260 foot home run to win the game. Right. It was so tight on both lines and then deep in center field. Mm. So how many of those home runs were. Pop flies to win a game in the bottom of the ninth. Mel Lott. Well, they did a really good job of putting themselves in position to be behind. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, it's amazing, but think about it. They had six walk off home runs in 1962, and they only won 40 games. Oh, so it could have been worse. <laughs> that's one way of looking at it. <laughs> Two and one to Hernandez. And that's off the plate three and one. They could have lost uh, 130. Oh, can you imagine? 124. I'm, I'm just trying to picture Ralph and, and Bob and Lindsay how they did it. Like, how did they stay? What, what did they talk about? They talked about the great new team in New York. Cesar Hernandez draws a two out walk after Verrett retired five in a row. There had to be great excitement in 62 
but I gather it started to get probably wear on them a bit as it is as they got into 64 and 5. 64 remember was the first year of Shea and that was a very exciting year okay. because they started getting big crowds. The first year at the Polo Grounds they drew less than a million for the season. So it took a little while for the thing to build. 63 they drew much better and then at Shea at 64 is when it started to explode and they had the World's Fair next door. And even though the team wasn't very good it was a very exciting time to be a Mets fan. There's Roman Quinn. And he takes up the knees for a strength. So did you? I mean, maybe they probably spent a lot of time on on Casey stuff, right? And his, you know, he probably filled the notebook for him every no every day. But but I'll tell you what else they did, and they did it extraordinarily well, and it helped. You know, having Ralph there, who was an established National League player, they talked about the other team, yeah, a lot, and really emphasized the stars that were coming in to face the Mets. And there were plenty. Ground ball to the right side. Johnson has it go off his backhand. And everybody's safe. An infield hit for Roman Quinn, his second hit of the night. And now the Phillies have two on with two out. Ball came up just a little bit, Keith. Yep, it sure did. Him in a heel of his glove. Is fast enough that I'm wondering had he played that cleanly, if he would have been able to get him at first base. And to get the force out. Could he then play at second on Hernandez? No, he's fast too. Mm -hmm. There's Odubel Herrera. There's one for two, single to left field in the first. So Hernandez at second, Quinn at first with two out. Seven hits now for Philadelphia. First five against Gabriel and Noah, the last two against Logan Verrett. Conversation will ensue. Not sure about what sign they're going to use, maybe with the runner on second base for the first time for uh, Darno and Verrett. Game three of this series tomorrow night. Sean Gilmartin will make the start for the Mets with Noah Syndergaard pushed back because of strep throat. Our coverage begins at 6 o'clock tomorrow night right here on SNY. Checking in from the space station. <laughs> Mir. Here's Herrera. <laughs> Takes one of the dirt. It's ball one. Got to get this out here with Franco on deck. Nobody up behind the red in the bullpen. Trying to get him through a second inning. And then perhaps pinch hit for him if his spot comes up at the bottom of the fourth. He's due up fifth. Cabrera playing right behind Hernandez at second, so he can't get too big of a lead. Changing of the guard last night in the American League wildcard race. The Tigers took over the second spot. A half game in front of the Orioles. And Detroit's up 4 0 against the Royals tonight. Another home run for Justin Upton, who's been red hot. Josh Smoker up in the Mets bullpen. And Baltimore is down 2 0 to Arizona in the fifth. Wow. The Orioles really starting to fade. They've lost four in a row. All those to the Red Sox. Four game sweep. And just missed the inside corner, two and one. Brad Osmus, the Detroit manager, sat down Upton for three days on the beginning of August, and since then, I believe he has 12 home runs since that time. He had one last night. He's had another one tonight. And maybe more. He's got uh, 27 now. to Herrera. And he fouls away the fastball, two and two. Here are the results of our Toyota Twitter poll. We asked what's the most exciting play to end a game, and of course, baseball fans are watching. <laughs> Majority say he walked off home run. What do you say, Ron? Well, well, the biggest excitement I ever had as a kid was Bobby Orr scored an overtime goal against Gump Worsley at the St. Louis Blues and then tripped by Barkley Plager. So the overtime hockey goal is mine. 
I was pretty partial to the Chris Jenkins three pointer to win the national championship. <laughs> I like the basketball the last second hoop. It doesn't have to be a three pointer. <laughs> two on two out two and two to Herrera. Stemkowski's goal in triple overtime yeah. against the Blackhawks in 71. That was pretty special. Well, I, I've given up a walk off home run, so, you know, it's not that appealing to yeah, me. <laughs> well, that the entire term walk off was coined by your buddy Dennis That's Eckersley. Right. It's not the team that hits it that walks off, it's the pitcher who gave up the home run, the poor sap. He has to walk uh, off, but right. amidst the celebration. I was a sap. That was, that's where the, the term came from. And a poor one at that. <laughs> That only in the <laughs> nicest way. <laughs> I mean, oh, what's was, going on here? I mean, it wasn't the Mets who walked off last night. It was Anabry Ramos. That's right. Who had to put his head down and trudge off to the dugout while the Mets were celebrating, uh, throwing water all over each other. Pitchers walk a shame, right? By the way, could Gelbs have gotten any wetter last night than when Cabrera uh, came under attack? I think it was Cespedes who got him with the uh, with the bucket. It was Cespedes, yes. I have no problem with it personally. Incoming, and Gelb's completely unaware. <laughs> How could he be unaware? Oh, this has only been going on for. <laughs> it's better than the cream pies, <laughs> right? Yeah, right? Those. And that was that Justin Turner. That yeah, was often Justin Turner, yes. The cream pies. Right with the 2 2, and Herrera takes the breaking ball in the dirt, full count. To be fair, guys, I'm not unaware that that's coming, but I want to be a team player here and not give it away to Cabrera. So I hung in there and took one for the team. Oh, yes, yeah, sure. You, you, <laughs> you, were, you were clueless there. You go looking the other way. Right. I'm a pretty good actor. Uh, By the way, do you notice that Steve sounds a little angry? <laughs> Extra trip to the dry Oh, Everything. yeah. That's all that's, well, that stuff gets sticky when it dries off too. Ugh. Can I charge the company for that? Yeah. You can try. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, did you shower at the ballpark or did you, uh, young man? Steve? I, did, I did not shower at the ballpark. Oh, gosh. Inside to Herrera, the bases are loaded for Franco. Second walk of the inning for Verrett. Different angle, same result. Oop. Did you see my oh. eyes right there? Yeah. A little to the right and then just hang in. I knew that was coming. Uh, back and to the right. <laughs> Saying that Steve has eyes in the back of his head. Well, if the Mets want to win this game, this is going to be a very important moment in. The bases are loaded with two mm. out. The Mets are already down three to one on the fourth, and Michael Franco homered last night, and his homer tonight is striding to the plate. Martin has said his piece at the mound to Logan <laughs> Barrett. We got the first two hitters out in this inning, but then he walked Hernandez, infield hit to Quinn, and now walked to Herrera. And here is Franco, whose home run in the third inning was his 24th of the year and his second in two nights. Josh Smoker ready in the bullpen. Well, this is Verrett's moment. Mm. He starts with a slider out of the strike zone. I mean, I'm only saying this because uh, I, I did this a lot early in my career. You're trying to make that nasty slider on the first pitch be a perfect one in the outside corner. You can just flip it up there. He's got to be look, sitting dead red. Get yourself ahead with a strike. Grounds one foul. One of one. Just trying to pull. Travis Darno hit on the back of the hand by that follow through from Franco.
One one to Franco. And the slider off the plate. Two and one. Well, it's a strange word that that ball players use, but but certain hitters, you call them cripple hitters. And what does that mean? It means a guy like Franco, he has kind of one swing. And if he gets an account where it's 2 1 3 1, he's going to do a lot of damage because that one swing is going to be more in play because you have to throw a strike. Once you get ahead of him, you can just throw it anywhere because he wants to swing the bat. Rockets that one foul. Too quick. He's just trying to launch. He did it last night against Addison Reed to put the Phillies in front of the eighth. He did it against Barrett. First man Logan faced when he came in the game in the third after he fell behind him 2 0. Now with the bases loaded at 2 out, it's 2 and 2 to Franco. Is at third, Quinn at second, Herrera at first. 2 2 from Barrett. And it's outside, full count. Mm. Well, you got yourself behind a, backed into a corner now. You can't get the breaking ball over. And you've got the, uh, the sacks intoxicated, and you better throw a strike. Intoxicated and about to move. Hernandez. Quinn Herrera will all be running with three and two and two down. Lots of speed out there. Something in the gap will all score. Three two to Franco. And a little tapper back to Verant. Now he wins the battle. Gets the comebacker with a three two fastball and strands three. Keeps the Mets in this game. Still three to one fills. Tonight's games, the Mets with these three against the Phillies, then finish on the road in Miami and Philadelphia. The Giants with three this weekend in San Diego, then finish at home with the Rockies and Dodgers. And the Cardinals, after losing today in Chicago, play two more there, then get home, go home to play the Pirates and the Reds to finish the season. Kelly Johnson leads off the home fourth inning against Jeremy Hellickson. Johnson was robbed of a base hit on a terrific play by Cesar Hernandez his first time up. It's one and one. Hasn't come all that easy for Hellickson. Had to throw 54 pitches through the first three innings. He has been a control pitcher who's had trouble. 
throwing strikes. He's a breaking ball pitcher. He has to be fine tuned. That's line toward the middle and snagged by Galvis. Nice leaping grab by Galvis for the first out. And Ellickson has gotten his share of line drive outs tonight. That's his third. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bounce. Look up in the sky. <laughs> So one out now Michael Conforto ripped a double down the right field line and scored the only Mets run in the second. And Conforto gets under one to right field. Did he get enough of it? That goes Quinn onto the track. He's got room. And puts it away. Two out. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Jeep and the unique brand of freedom you'll only find in the full line of Jeep vehicles. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. Lucas Duda coming up. Let's check in with Steve. Gary Lucas Duda is working overtime right now, trying to get back to where he wants to be every day, coming out on the field at 2.15 in the afternoon to take extra batting practice. The problem is that really doesn't simulate major league pitching. He was hoping that when he got up here to the major leagues, he could track some bullpen sessions. Looks pretty good right there as he drives that one into the double gap, or into the gap there. Lucas slides in safely with his first hit since the month of May. A ringing double. Well, he's swinging the bat pretty good here. He might be swinging his ray right into the lineup here. Almost hit a home run pinch hitting last night. And this is a laser beam. It went, got right out there quick. So what I was saying is that Duda was hoping to track some bullpen sessions but at this point in the season most pitchers aren't throwing bullpen so it's been a lot of extra batting practice. What you saw right there is that the bat speed the confidence is back with the fastballs for him right now. The biggest question mark is how quickly it's going to come back in terms of his ability to recognize breaking pitches. He can only get there though by playing in games. As Travis Darno drove in the Met run with a double his first time up and it takes a strike. Brandon Nimmo is out on deck to pinch hit. If Darno keeps this inning going, well, Darno, uh, due to his last three at bats, he had the near game winning home run last night before he struck out. The line drive that Howard caught in the second tonight, and now this hard hit double to right center. So the trend line is certainly <laughs> positive for Lucas right now. And right now, whether you are hot or not is all that matters because there's only Eight games to go after today. Well, Lucas last night in his pinch hitting appearance swung at the first pitch, swung at the first pitch in his first at bat, swung at the first pitch there for that double. Last hit was May the 20th against Milwaukee, and now more than four months later, he has his next hit. As for Darno, he had gone 47 at bats without an RBI before his run scoring double in the second. Maybe that gets him unlocked. That's about four hits against Ellickson. Three of the four have been doubles, and they've all been well struck. Conforto and Darno in the second, and Duda here in the fourth. And in between, a whole bunch of line drive outs. Well, Duda's was a clothesline. It was a bullet. And that's inside, and Helixson's behind three and one. By the way, it seems as though Helixson works slowly. The numbers will bear out that you're right. 24.4 seconds average between pitchers this year, the eighth slowest pitcher among mm. starters in the majors. So he's a guy you shudder when he's on getaway day. <laughs> I want to get away at some point today. <laughs> it's behind on Darno, three and one. Nimmo on deck to pinch it. 
And Travis pulls one down to third and Franco handles it. And that retires the side. So a double and one left after four still three to one Philadelphia. Test drive to do four. You'll discover why Ford is the total package. All the traffic out in center field. Yes, you're on TV. Hi. Hi, how you doing? That's what make a double switch. Rene Rivera will come in to catch. He'll bat ninth. And Josh Smoker will pitch the fifth inning. Uh, was it a double switch? So they might be asking uh, Josh to get uh, three or well, more than three outs. See his numbers so far of this year. His last two appearances came in and walked a hitter and then gave up that kind of jam shot to Freddie Freeman in the last game of that series. That was a controversial move. Addison Reed was taken out for a smoker who made a good pitch to Freeman but still gave up the hit. Looking at Smoker's numbers, only once this season since joining the Mets has he gone more than one inning. It was in his third appearance in St. Louis. He worked two innings in that game. And it would certainly appear from having double switched that Terry wants more than an inning out of him tonight. Ryan Howard, the first man to face him, has been up twice, flied out to left both times, and takes a slider for a strike. So Logan Verrett in relief went two innings, allowed one run, two hits, two walks, two strikeouts, one home run. Quickly 0 and 2 to Howard. Cameron Rupp on deck, and then Freddie Galvez for the Phillies in the fifth. It feels as though we're, you know, in the seventh inning, but we're, it's, this game has gone very slowly. Well, only in the top of the fifth. Remember, the tortoise won that race with the hare. What was the time of game? <laughs> Pace of play. <laughs> Did the tortoise step out of the batter's box? <laughs> Can we kept the, kept the foot in? <laughs> did the hair make a pitching change? <laughs> Check swing by Howard. Did he go? He did not. Third base umpire Andy Fletcher gives him a pass. One and two. Howard has only had 31 at bats against left-handed pitching this year. Tommy Joseph has gotten almost all the time against lefties. But left in to face Smoker here. And he hits a fly ball out to center. Easy for Granderson. One out. So Howard is retired. And now Cameron Rupp, who's grounded out and struck out 0 for 2.
Yeah, Rupp takes the fastball at the knees for a strike. Well, Smoker lets it go every once in a while, doesn't he? 95 right there. Well, he has certainly shown why he was once a first round draft mm -hmm. pick before shoulder problems knocked his career backwards. And he blows that one by Rupp at 95, and it's 0 2. Sure is a, a, a burly guy. Looks more like a linebacker. Not built that differently from Josh Edgen. Is yeah, it? yeah, very same. Josh Edgen was a high school wrestler. Mm. Nice rub, lift those hands, set them up to go back away, and now it's one and two. Galvis waits on deck. Two two to Rupp. Mm. Just missed inside with that slider. Smoker thought he had it. Come from the left side, you feel like this ball crosses the plate at some point before Rivera caught it. Who two years ago was pitching for the Rockford Aviators in the Frontier League? <laughs> Independent ball. Rockford, Illinois. I wonder where that would be, maybe? It's, yeah, that's Rockford, Illinois. I, I was thinking Rockford was one of the cities in the uh, All American Girls that's Professional right. League, right? Watch his glove, folks. Kind of leans back. Stiff front leg and just tucks that glove right under his armpit at the beginning. And then it'll go right behind him. Kind of pulls on it. That used to be a very common way to teach pitchers in my day is that when you threw the ball to the plate, you wanted to take that front glove, you wanted to kind of cast it towards your target and then rip it back into your armpit. That's how you got the speed going. So you have it out there, and then this is the part where you rip it back into your, your chest and armpit to get that velocity going. And a half swing by Ruffy went around strike three. So Smoker wins that battle, two out of nobody on. Well, he throws so hard he can take something off that curveball, get Rupp out in front. So two out of nobody on. Now Freddie Galvez will turn around about right-handed. Now the bloop single in the second and scored a run, struck out. Now this is hit for a higher average left-handed than right-handed, just 214 from this side of the plate. Ball on the outside corner, nothing and two. Smoke with the third Met pitcher of the night, Gabriel Noah, the starter, went just two innings before being lifted for a pinch hitter. Noah allowed two runs and five hits. Logan for Red worked two innings, one run, two hits, and now Smoker absorbing the fifth. Tonight, where if the Mets do come from behind, they will not have their top two relievers available. Terry Collins has ruled Addison Reed has worked three straight games, and Jerry is familiar who's worked two straight out of tonight's game. Smoker strikes out Galvis. Impressive inning for Smoker. One, two, three with a couple of strikeouts. Halfway through, three to one Philly.
Broncos home run added to the Phillies lead in the third. Travis Darno doubled in Michael Conforto in the second inning for the only Met run. Mets have already used three pitchers tonight. Jeremy Hellickson still out there for the Phillies. Rene Rivera leads off for the Mets in the home fifth. Just came in on a double switch the last half inning. And Rene bounces one foul, nothing in one. Rivera has been doing most of the catching lately. He started last night, went 0 for 4. Hit a home run the night before against the Braves. Six home runs for the year for Rivera. Jose Reyes on deck and then has Dribble Cabrera for the Mets in the fifth. Ellickson's allowed four hits, three of them for extra bases. And a good off speed pitch gets him ahead on Rivera, 0 and 2. A good shot we have there of a Struble Cabrera with the day and age of everyone going to the hitting coach for instruction and looking at the uh, iPad or whatever they are using in the dugout. You know what he does? He uses his eyeballs on the top of the dugout, studying the pitcher. Back to deep left field. Ashy going back, and it's over his head, and one hop to the wall. Rene Rivera will stop at first base. Took a hard turn. Ashy played the one hopper off the wall cleanly. And Rivera settles for a single. I think it was a wise move here. There's no way that he thought this ball was out. Let him go with one hand. Just with that kind of swing, you're slow out of the box. And he's not fleet of food. Fleet of food. Fleet of foot. And played well by Ashy. He was, he was going. That's his clip yep. right there. So the Mets get the tying run of the plate here in the bottom of the fifth for Reyes. He's fly down, grounded out, 0 for 2. Coming off a three hit shutout against the Miami Marlins six days ago. This has been much more of a slog for him, but he's been working with the lead for most of the night. Mm. Yeah, that one pops just in, so oh. two and one. Kerwin Danley, the home plate umpire, was ready to lift up with the right arm. Deck Cespedes behind him. That's coiled and poised to strike against Tillickson here in the fifth. Hmm. Reyes follows that one low. Three and one. He's been a little erratic with his changeup tonight. Well, I, I mean, he, he, he's making a mistake with it down. And he's expecting the Mets hitter to be fastball happy and to be swinging over the top of it. But again, like they've done almost every start against him, they've been very good at not swinging at the pitch in the dirt. Now he's behind three and one on Reyes. And Jose grounds one toward the hole. Hernandez gets it. He'll have to get the out at first. He thought about second with Rivera running. But Rene was hustling and Hernandez had to go to first. Nice range to his left on this ball. Pretty slick little fielder. I don't, Good range. I don't think he fielded it cleanly. That might be the reason he didn't make the play. See how it's on the you know. snow cone there? You're right, Ron. Kind of rolled up his glove. Well, a one run lead, does he go to second base as opposed to with a two run lead? Does that make a difference on a play like that? I, I, yeah, yeah, why not? I mean, the run is off, awfully important because it's only the fifth inning, but so is the out. So now Rivera second with one out. Here's Cabrera. 
It went an infield hit off Howard's glove in the first inning, and then Howard made a nice play going to his right and threw him out in the third. Owls went off his leg. That's a little hard slider. Let's hope it didn't get off his knee. I thought he fouled it off his quad. I mean, that's how high it was. And it's his left knee that's been barking. I don't think he got that. Oh, we got his right shin. Knee. Got his shin. Oh. Jeez. Well, now he's got uh, pain in both legs. That old cutter in down. Oh, it did get the knee just below. The just knee below, cut. but enough high enough. That that hurts. That's where Rusty Staub would whack you on the knee with his bat occasionally <laughs> in the dugout. Oh. Right there. You never, never do it to me. Well, you're, you know, you're an everyday player, star. You know. Well, as Drupal has played through just about every bit of pain this season. Will he hang in here? Of course. By the way, is it just me? Or has he spent a lot more time bareheaded since he went blind? He's feeling, he's, he's, he's feeling good about yeah. his hair. Well, it's uh, served him well. He has been red hot as a blonde. Hmm. No reason to change now. <laughs> yes, they do have more fun. No doubt. <laughs> it's been painful for him at times. That's very good. Did you just drop a Gwen Stefani reference on it? <laughs> was that just my imagination? <laughs> Owen one to Cabrera with Cespedes on deck. Mm. And the slider at his feet. One and one. Do you find it remarkable that with the bad knee, Cabrera has hit for as much power recently as he has. It's on his back leg too. So that's your foundation. That's what you drive off of. Gary um, in either knee. Uh, no it's pretty it's, I can't, remarkable is too strong a word. And you know when you I remember Tim McCarver mentioning once back in the 80s. Um, I just happened to be in the clubhouse when he said it because when you get hurt. You really focus and concentrate on maybe just one swing and get out of that box. So your focus is sharper because you're hurting, and I believe that as true. 22 home runs this year for Cabrera, second highest total of his career. And nine of those have come in the 32 games since he came off the disabled list and has been playing with that bad knee. I tell you what, Hellickson has been flirting with three and one all game, and one sooner or later he's going to get hung up and for dry. How about after you threw a cutter and he fouls it off his shin? You don't go back in there. What's that about? Rivera at second and one out. Cespedes on deck. Three one coming to Cabrera, and as Dribble takes it outside, ball four. And now the Mets have the tying runs aboard, and Cespedes coming up. Second walk given up by Hellison. Now Hellison has really this entire game tried to tiptoe his way through this Mets lineup. Could end right here. He's handled Cespedes so far. He's popped to second and grounded to third, but Cespedes has three home runs and 16 career at bats against Ellingson. Michael Marriott, first man up in the Phillies bullpen. Rivera at second. Cabrera the tying run at first with one out. That's down three to one in the fifth. And it's outside to Cespedes. <laughs> The 
there and then off the inning with a single off the wall and left. Advanced on the ground out. Cabrera then drew the walk. 1 0 change up here, Keith. You know Cespedes crushes that pitch. I mean, flirting with danger, anything breaking. Got a veteran pitcher out there. Well, a veteran pitcher, but one who has struggled with the long ball this year, particularly against the Mets. He's given up 24 home runs this year, and in his six prior career starts against the Mets, 11 home runs allowed. So he looks like he's pitching very carefully. Almost, I mean, I want to say that this word, it's an awful word, but I've done it myself. He's pitching a little scared out there. It's an awful word to say to about a pitcher, but that's what it looks appears to be. Let's see what he features two and zero. Oh. He's running out of his bag of tricks here. And Cespedes takes a cut, but not a good one. And a fastball up and away, two and one. And Cespedes was looking something middle in. Not a good two zero hack, and he knew it. Look at his expression. Or, or the greatest setup in the history of the game. <laughs> Get to throw the same pitch and get it out of the ballpark, out to right center. He's got to throw a strike here. He can't go three and one again off this guy. Chris Granderson on deck. Two on and one out. Oh, oh, oh. This watch is well away. Three and one. Third straight batter that Hellickson has fallen behind three and one. He got Reyes on the nice play by Hernandez on the ground ball. He walked Cabrera. Now he's three and one on Cespedes. Well, he's concocted a witch's brew here. He's in behind the eight ball, toil and trouble. Three one coming. And oh. Cespedes takes it high and the bases are loaded. Back to back walks issued by Hellickson. And if you're Pete McCannon, how much farther do you go with your starter? He's going to send Bob McClure, the pitching coach, out. Jeez. So that means that Hellickson will stay in to face Granderson with the bases loaded. You know, Hellickson has had a nice second half. Struggled against the Mets, we know that. But remember, he's pitching for a contract. He's yeah. a one year deal with the Phillies after pitching in Arizona last year. And uh, there's a chance the Phillies might re sign him, but it's not guaranteed. It depends on what tape they watch. Is it this game or the three hit shutout against the Marlins day? Well, they got to run him out of there. Let's go, Kerwin. They're way over the whatever the 30 seconds. Yeah, we're going uh, into overtime now. Kerwin Dam is very chatty with the players. Was uh, was Bobby McClure a dawdler when when you were, was he a what a dawdler? When, when you were oh oh. I don't remember. <laughs> it's so long ago. <laughs> Well, a big chance for Granderson with the bases loaded and one out. Rivera at third, Cabrera at second, Cespedes at first. Mets down three to one in the fifth. Granderson had a hard line drive that Howard caught his last time up. He's 0 for two tonight. And Granderson mm -hmm. takes a fastball for a strike. Curtis has never had much luck against Hellickson. Just five for 29 with one home run. Two fastballs in a row here. And Curtis takes a fastball away. The ball on a strike. Kelly Johnson on deck. Edison's already thrown 21 pitches in this inning. He's walked the last two hitters. And Curtis swings and hits one to shallow right. He'll drop in for a base hit. 
Rivera scores. Everybody else moves up a base. Granderson drives it a run to cut the Phillies lead to three to two. Well, he's dug his own hole, Hellickson. And he's become predictable. Granderson, after taking the first fastball, gets on that one. This is the only way that Cabrera can stop these days. We've seen this a couple of times now the last two nights, this sliding stop. That's 16 RBIs and 20 September games now for Granderson. Remember when he couldn't drive in a run without a home run? It's changed big time now for Curtis. Base is still loaded for Kelly Johnson. Mets now down a run. And oh. Kelly takes up and away for ball one. Johnson has hit two balls hard in this game. Hernandez made a nice play to his right and threw him out in the second. Then he hit a line drive that the shortstop Galvis made a leaping grab on in the fourth. This is where as a manager McCannon giving the benefit of the doubt to a veteran starter doesn't look like he's going to make it through the fifth. And oh. watches outside two and oh my God. <laughs> and he began with Rene Rivera who had just come in on a double switch single off the wall and left after Reyes grounded out back to back walks then the Granderson hit to drive in a run. And now Johnson poised with a 2 0 count. Well, Alex is having second thoughts. It's a beautiful pitch to hit. Johnson just 1 for 11 in his career against Ellickson with the 0 for 2 tonight. Yeah, cool. Oh. Oh, I see. See, he's in punch mode. He doesn't have any idea what he wants to throw. He doesn't want to throw a fastball. Kelly's got a uh, pinch hit grand slam, doesn't he, this season? He hit the grand slam off the guy warming up at the bullpen, Michael Mario, last month. Maybe he can do it as a starter here. Eric Goodell up in the Mets bullpen. The Mets have hit six grand slams this year. <laughs> 2-0 coming from Hellickson. And the fastball ripped in the right of base hit. In comes Cabrera with the tying run. Sussman is being waved home. He gets behind Quinn. The Mets take the lead. Granderson goes to third. Johnson winds up on second. 4-3 New York. And that's going to be it. The Mets have scored three times in the fifth inning. Kelly Johnson ties the game with a base hit, and then a second run scores on the air by Quinn. Low fastball, 2 0 count, had to. Pretty predictable. There's the bad play by Quinn. Really an easy play, an up hop. Play that ball behind his leg, though. You got to play it out front. Uh, Jeremy Hellickson has thrived against the rest of the league, but he has suffered against the New York Mets, and again tonight, Mets take a four to three lead in the fifth and knock Hellickson out. This call to the bullpen is brought to you by Verizon. We'll be right back to City Field.
here in the fifth inning. Boy, he's in a pickle. Two guys on second and third. And see that first batter faced number. Uh, throws hard, 95 plus sometimes with a hard slider. He retired TJ Rivera on a fly ball last night. He faces Michael Conforto, who's hit two balls well tonight, a double in the second. He scored a run, then he hit one deep to right that was caught in the fourth. Infield in. Mets have taken a 4 3 lead, second and third, and one out. And Conforto takes the curveball down for ball one. Frank Irwin, the Jersey native, Harvard grad. A can tab. Can tab. <laughs> Just like to see Michael here use what one of the great strengths that hasn't been a strength during the middle of this summer that discipline, strike zone discipline. Oh my God. Herman picking Woo. up where Hellickson <laughs> left off, falling behind 2 0. Oh. Ellison went four and a third, seven hits, four runs so far, three walks, one strikeout. The Mets have scored all four runs without benefit of a home run. That hasn't happened often this year. And a base hit here could play two more. Lucas Duda on deck. Seven of the nine runs last night, Mets scored via the home run. Granderson at third, Johnson at second, and Conforto takes a strike on the inside edge, two and one. Granderson drove in the first run of the inning, Johnson the second. The go ahead run scored on the error by the right fielder Quinn. And now Conforto trying to cash in with second and third and one out. Michael's had good at bats the last couple of nights to a walk last night as a pinch hitter and the night before. Two good at bats today. And now he's ahead of the count three and one. Oh, I'd love to see that. Hits a fastball, two one, but it wasn't where he wanted it. Let it go. Field up all the way around. Lots of holes for Conforto to shoot for. Ahead of the count, three and one. And he whacks one out to deep left field. Back goes Ashy to the track at the wall. It's out of here. Michael Conforto on opposite field, three run homer. It's a six run fifth inning for the New York Mets on a seven to three lead. And for Michael Conforto, putting together the best string of big league at bats he's had since April. His 12th home run of the year. And if he's back, everything changes. <laughs> it does. Due to fouls went off. And the most important thing here, and Conforto's got to realize this, as he's got some power to the opposite field. He does not need to pull. We saw it last year. Half of his home runs went to left field. This year became too pull conscious, but he's back using the whole field. And Duda takes a strike. Lucas has hit two balls hard tonight, a line out and a double. And Mets home run means $2,000 for no kid hungry enough to provide 20,000 healthy meals courtesy of City. It makes you remember how the to this team was supposed to be structured. <laughs> you know you go back to April when the Mets had such a wonderful beginning of the season 15 and 7 and when it was with Duda in the lineup and with Conforto in the lineup and raking. And now all of a sudden both of them are back for the final nine games. Duda strikes out for the second out. It's the first unadulterated smile that Michael's had since April. So now Josh Smoker will get his first big league plate appearance.
Smoker in his eight years in the minor leagues had two at bats. <laughs> Looking for his first professional hit. And he can smile because he's now the beneficiary of this six run inning. The ninth man to bat. Now the Mets get in the three run homer by Conforto. Their 209th home run of the season. Now just three behind the Cardinals for the league lead. Spoken makes contact. Well, he's got his first big league win earlier this year. How about his first big league hit? Not a good line for Helix, and his line is closed. And six runs are charged to him. The runs against Helix will be earned, despite the error that brought in the go-ahead run. Yeah, the, the three-run home run changed all that. Nelson continues to get beat around by the Mets. Smoker strikes out to end the inning, but not before the Mets put a big hurting on Hellickson and Herman and the Phillies. Michael Conforto's three run blast caps a six run bottom of the fifth. Fourth of the year for Conforto and probably none more satisfying. Mets lead at seven to three as we go to the sixth at City Field. Inning, putting them up seven to three. As we go to the sixth inning, Josh Smoker, who worked a one, two, three, fifth, will stay on to pitch the sixth against eight, nine, and one in the Phillies order. Cody Ashey is singled and lined out one for two. Darren Ruff has come out on deck to be a pinch hitter for the Phillies. So the Mets, who uh, sent Gabriel and Noah to the mound on Sunday against the Twins, and were able to sneak away with a win. Started him again tonight. You know it went just two innings on a night the Mets don't have their top two relievers. Keep that in mind as we move through the latter part of this game. And people's United Bank pitchers tonight. You know it went two. Verrett went two. Smoker working his second. The end game relievers tonight will probably be Jerry Blevins and Fernando Salas. Twelve more outs to get. So exactly. hold on to your seat. Twelve. So we'll probably see some Hansel Robles along the way. Gary Collins trying to patch it together. Josh Edgen might be part of that mix. 
This is why he's trying to get two innings out of Smoker to get him as deep into the game as he can. And now he's got a four run lead to work with. Two two to Ashy. Mm. And the slider off the plate three and two. When you have a team that has had a tough year and they're down. You can't walk anybody challenge them make them put it in play make a play. Actually he's hit two balls hard tonight. And fouls that one back. It's amazing how seasons go isn't it. Think about how the Mets offense was constructed coming into the season. And they lost so many important pieces David Wright and Lucas Duda and then Fordo stopped performing and then Walker goes down and now all of a sudden the last two weeks of the season is Michael Conforto back in form. Mm. His ball four and Ashley's on with a leadoff walk not with Smoker wanted with a four run lead. Fourth walk given up by Matt pitching already tonight and now Darren Ruff will come up to pinch it. You know what's going to get lost in that inning because he's an unassuming team first player. Kelly Johnson just seen how many big hits has he had for this ball club. It's amazing. And played in nearly a week. Poked into the lineup tonight and he comes through with the hit that ties the game. Colton Murray up in the bullpen for the Phils as they bat for the pitcher. Herman who gave up the three run homer to Conforto. Leaves with a pinch hitter rough. Aaron Ruff's career has been on short circuit. Mm. This year he's had just 73 big league at bats, hitting 164 with no home runs. A couple of years ago, he looked like he was a real emerging piece for the Phillies. A man without a position. You know, he can play some first base. That's probably his best position. But Howard still had it. That was still his position, so he tried to learn how to play left field. Smoker quickly up on the count 0 and 2. Cesar Hernandez, the on deck batter, a switch hitter. And rough fouls it away. Giants play later tonight in San Diego with the rookie Albert Suarez on the mound. Cardinals lost this afternoon at Wrigley Field to Jake Arrieta and the Cubs. So those are the wild card standings up to the moment. Would you say Edwin Jackson pitching for the Padres yes. tonight? Yeah. Yeah. The very well traveled Edwin Jackson. Wasn't he like 20 years old when he came up with the Dodgers? Yes. He was one of those guys who really got hurt by being rushed. Seems like he's been trying to catch up ever since. Mm. Curtain oh. corner to rough and it's two and two. Well, the, the fortunate part is while he was trying to catch up, he was getting paid. He got yeah. a big co four-year contract from the Cubbies, I think. This year he started out with the Marlins, wound up with the Padres, and now uh, Smoker after getting ahead of the count on rough, dallying around, it goes to a full count. Jackson got beat up in his last start in Colorado but throw that out the two before that he threw seven scoreless against the Red Sox mm. and also pitched another good game against Colorado six innings two runs so it's like a no no seven scoreless against the Red Sox with 11 strikeouts that's driven to deep center field headed back toward the wall and gone mm. a long home run off the bat of Darren Ruff his first home run of the season and the two run shot cuts the Mets lead in half it's now seven to five. So Smoker got ahead in the count with two. It went fully challenged Ruff and Ruff crushed it. Well, he threw it down and right down Broadway. Well, that's going to be all for Smoker.
walk and a two run homer putting a big crimp in Josh Smoker's night. Terry Collins trying to patch this bullpen together. We'll go to Eric Goodell here in the sixth inning. Now the Mets with just a two run lead. We'll be right back to City Field. Eric Adele got one out last night. He comes in here with nobody out and nobody on in the sixth in a 7 5 game. Top of the batting order, Cesar Hernandez takes a fastball for a strike. Cheap numbers for Eric Goodell. Boy, nice if we could get a little bit of length from him, especially since Smoker took that at bat. Well, the hope was that Smoker would give the Mets, if not two full innings, at least. You know, an inning in the third, an inning in two thirds, but instead, after working a one, two, three, fifth, a walk to the number eight hitter and a pinch hit two run homer by Darren Ruff sent him to the shower. The number eight hitter and the left handed hitter. Gary can't do it. He knows it though. <sighs> one on one to Hernandez, who singled and walked tonight, and he lifts this one to left, easy for Cespedes. And that's the first out of the inning. So Hernandez has been a tough out in this series. On base seven times out of nine before that at bat. Flies out. And now Roman Quinn, who's gone two for three in this game, singled in a run in the second inning, had an infield hit in the fourth. That's we're down two nothing and three to one before their six run fifth. And now the middle part of this bullpen trying to hang on to it. And Quinn bluffing a bunt sends the corners charging in. Strike one. The Mets used a franchise record tying 10 pitchers last night. How many tonight? They're on number four right now. Well, I'm not going to trust my count here, but of the players used on both sides in this game, eight of them have spent most of their time in the minor leagues this year. And the pennant push or wild card push. Well, I was thinking about this today as no one caught the whole plate on fire Danley. Thinking about this today in the wake of the announcement that Noah Syndergaard wouldn't start tomorrow because of strep throat. Is this season in terms of the injuries to the pitcher starting to remind you guys of 1987? <laughs> Yeah, but um, yeah, it does. I remember Coney broke his thumb. Sid hurt his knee. Um, groin injury for Roger McDowell. I, of course, broke my thumb in September. So yeah, it seemed like any time something bad could happen to the staff, it did. And and there were a lot of no names guys that came and 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 pitched and did a, a fine job. Tom Edens and others right. that kept the uh, Mets in the race. I mean, that team won 90 games, right? Yes. 
Don Schulze and John Mitchell. Right. All those guys filled in. Bob Gibson. Bob, the other Bob Gibson. That's uh, right. The. Um, that was the year Roger and Doc didn't start the season. That's right. Seven, right? First two months. Did not start the season. Now. Roger had a append appendicitis and uh, had to get an operation. I mean, Ronnie was the last guy standing. And then Ronnie was the last one hurt. Well, I started that game that is kind of memorable now in Mets history. Terry Pendleton hit that three run home run off Roger. Mets were winning four to one. In a crucial game. Well, you were working on a no hitter in that game when you got hurt. That's right. Oh well. Wasn't meant to be. That's sticks in my craw. Well, the irony this year, of course, with the Mets and what was supposed to be their starting rotation, and that's way inside the Quinn that's three and two, is you know, you lose Harvey and you lose now DeGrom and Mats does not look like he's going to be coming back. Wheeler never throws a pitch this year. Syndergaard now has to be pushed back. The only guy left standing is the 43 year old oh, guy. Yeah. Of course. I mean, the irony in that is just spectacular. Three two coming to Quinn. And he lines one to left, but right at Cespedes doesn't have to move for the second out. Carrier four of the young pitcher is going to be operated on. Matt has been. Uh, Wheeler Jacob has been. has been. Wheeler has been. And Matt probably, probably will be. He will be. Okay. Uh, the only question is whether Syndergaard will be. He's but also bone got, chips. got yeah. the bone spur. It's a smaller one, but that, that could be a candidate as well. So you could have all five of those young starters coming to spring training, not having thrown a big league pitch since surgery. Hmm. It's amazing, right? Which is not to say that they won't be able to perform. It's just there'll be a lot of uncertainty going into spring training. And you know when you have the Lugos and the Gazelmans and the Anoas and the Monteros and everybody else who's still in the mix in this organization, they'll all be there too. Well, um, you know, for for Stephen, if if it's an operation for a bone chip, I had that twice. I never missed any time in a regular season. And for Jacob, I had my nerve moved and never missed any time in the regular season. So. They should be all right. It's a good curveball by Goodell, one and one to Herrera. And with uh, with Harvey, the thoracic outlet surgery is one that pitchers seem to have recovered yeah. from all yeah. right, and he will have ample recovery time since he had it so early in the year. Because Elman might have to have a surgery on his left arm. That's right. <laughs> Got that shoulder problem on his non-pitching arm. Herrera lifts one to left. Your poker hand in this inning will be three sevens. And Goodell gets the job done. They get us to the bottom of the sixth with the Mets leading seven to five.
Jackson, deep right field. Back goes Altair, looking up at the wall. It's out of here! Jose Reyes ties the game with a two-run homer. And Cabrera hits him a deep right field. Back goes Borges, near the wall. It's out of here! Out of here! As Drupal Cabrera wins it for New York. A three-run walk-off home run. Dramatics last night. Mets hoping to win without such dramatics tonight. Rene Rivera pops up the first pitch thrown by Colton Murray. Brian Howard walks into foul territory to get it. One pitch and one out for the Kansas Jayhawk, Colton Murray. You see his numbers. His first 10 appearances with the Phillies, outstanding ERA just over one. His last 10 appearances, ERA over 10. That's where you get that ERA of 5.76. And as far as those comics, as we look out on the Shea Bridge, Nice job by John DeMarsico, our Stan Lee of the production crew. <laughs> well, that's good to have a comics guy on the staff. <laughs> and so say Reyes is 0 for 3 tonight, a fly ball and two grounders. Jeremy Hellickson took it on the chin, four and a third inning, six runs, seven hits. Frank Herman gave up a three run homer to Michael Conforto. Mets led 7 to 3. The two run pinch hit homer by Darren Ruff made it 7 to 5. And the Mets find themselves in another hard fought game. Every day. Reyes pops this one up, and it should stay in play for Franco. Two foul pop ups, two outs. You know, Gary and Keith, just thinking out loud, how many pitchers you see the Cubbies, of course, beating the Cardinals? I wonder how many pitchers in today's game that the complete game is so rare. Are able to put back to back great games together after they've had a signature game, a complete game shutout against Miami, and their next start was like the one Hellickson had. I thought it'll be something to look at maybe this winter. Well, there aren't that many complete yeah, games it, to go So it won't be that hard. Right. There's Cabrera, who's been on base twice, an infield hit and a walk. One for two on the night. Jeep Mets box score. Plenty of hits to go around tonight. Michael Conforto, the only home run so far. A three run shot. One one to Cabrera. He fouled one off his knee earlier in the game. Not the bad knee, the other knee. Now he should be more balanced. <laughs> you went Cespedes on deck. Let's have a few scattered at bats against Colton Murray. Cespedes has a home run against him. Here's your portion leaderboard. Highest percentage of runs via the home run. Mets have been right in that 53% range all year. It hasn't changed as some of those teams have seen those numbers diminish a little bit later in the year. The Mets have held steady there. The Orioles have still hit the most home runs, right? Not tonight. <laughs> Although they just got a home run by Pedro Alvarez to get on the board. They were shut out for the first six innings of Camden Yards tonight by Arizona and Shelby Miller. Yeah, that's Shelby Miller. Yeah, I'd like to see him come back. He's got too good of an arm not to be a an effective pitcher. ERA over six and a half. Two to one Arizona in the ninth. Where it rounds one to the right side for Hernandez. And that's the inning. So Murray comes in and gets the Mets on one, two, three after the Phillies got closer. Now to the seventh, it's seven to five.
the five lead. Eric Goodell, who came in to uh, tamp things down in the sixth inning, got all three hitters he faced. He'll stay on for the seventh to face Michael Franco, who homered back in the third inning. At the time, it gave the Phillies a three to one lead before the Mets put up a six spot in the bottom of the fifth to go in front. And Franco takes a curveball for a strike. Franco, Howard, and Rupp do up for the Phillies in the seventh. So you were talking about pitchers rebounding from complete <laughs> games, Ronnie. It's worth noting that this year, I believe, is going to be the first full season in Major League history without 100 complete games. Yeah, wow. Even last year there were 104. This year it's down to 81 with a week less than a week and a half. Wow. Left. It's a shame. It's a plain shame. Yeah. Well, it's become the the aberration as opposed to when it was expected. Well, when it was expected, I could, I could say in some ways that was bad too. We lost a lot of pitchers to uh, you know guys like Mel Stottlemyre who would routinely throw 270, 300 innings. Um, you know, Sandy Koufax who had to retire at such a young age. So maybe it was swung the other way too much. Curveball lined up the middle of base hit for Franco, his second hit of the night. And that'll get the tying run to the plate for the Phillies here in the seventh with Ryan Howard coming up. So remember Smoker worked a one two three uh, fifth one two three fifth inning they left him in for the sixth and he gave him a walk and a two run homer. Now after Goodell got the first three hitters he faced in the sixth he stays on for the seventh and he gives up a lead off hit. You know, for all the people who scream and yell about how a relief pitcher should be left in for a second inning when he's been successful. Sometimes they're not successful. Listen, they're not used to pitching another inning. <laughs> they're used to getting the outs and going and having a cold one. As Ryan Howard is 0 for 3. Three fly ball outs. And he takes the fastball high. Well, those are the percentage of starts completed by decade. And this decade. We're down below 4%. Wow. Last year, just over 2%. This year, less than that. Trying to get it down to zero at some point. Do mm -hmm. our best. That's become almost a moot point. It's just not part of the game anymore. Yeah. Well, luckily the injuries are not happening because of that. I believe that was sarcasm. Yeah. And strike to Howard two and one. Cameron Rupp, the on deck batter. Let's have the bullpen cranking again after the leadoff hit by Franco. And Howard takes a splitter off the plate. Now it's three and one. So Goodell has painted himself into a dangerous spot against Howard. We homered last night. Also Robles, Josh Edgen up in the Mets bullpen here in the seventh. Remember, no Reed, no Familia tonight. And Howard checks the swing, and it's a strike. Drew and Denley thought about it. Now it's three and two. Nope. Everything's changed now. There's very few people challenged three and one, two and zero. Oh. Three two coming. And then it's outside ball four. He came with a 3 2 splitter. And that's what gets you in trouble. And now the tying runs are on base with nobody out. So Goodell running into second inning trouble, much as Smoker did. That's five walks for Matt pitching tonight. We'll get a pinch runner now for Howard. Peter Borges will come in to run for him, carrying the tying run. Uh, with all the uh, bullpens in for the Mets and for. The Philadelphia Phillies, this has become a, a, a LV game for both. Lehigh Valley relieving against Ooh. Las Vegas. Ooh, Ronnie. <laughs> LV squared. Yeah, right. 
So Goodell gives up a single and a walk, and now Cameron Rupp, the batter, Rupp is 0 for 3, grounded out, struck out twice, and you know what Goodell needs here with Rupp, who doesn't run very well, get a ground ball. It's a pretty good chance to turn two. Franco at second, Borges at first. And the Mets now clinging to a 7 to 5 lead in the seventh. Rupp takes a fastball for a strike. Rupp is grounded into 10 double plays this season. Hit a home run last night. He smoked one over the fence in right center against Seth Lugo. Rupp's got 16 home runs this year. And he hits this one out to center. This one's playable for Granderson. Tagging at second is Franco. They'll go over to third. The throw comes to second. That keeps the tying run on first. One out. Well, you just missed that. Split finger. What new? So runners at the corners with one out. And now Freddie Galvis, who's one for three, singled and scored a run in the second, struck out twice since. With a two run lead. Terry Collins is on his way out to the mound and he wants to turn Galvis around. He's a weaker hitter right handed and so he'll bring in the lefty in this spot. Josh Edgen will come in to relieve Goodell. So Goodell exits after an inning and a third and Edgen comes in to face Galvis. 7 5 Mets in the seventh. Another pitching change for the Mets. We'll be right back to City Field. With first and third and one out. Well, the number um, they don't have there on the board. He's stranded 14 out of the 16 runners he's had on base. That's a good number. Struck out the only batter he faced last night. Odubel Herrera comes in here to face Freddie Galvez. Franco at third, Borges at first, and Galvez fouls off the first pitch. Nothing at one. Terry's going to bite all of his nails down to his cuticles tonight, not being able to use. He has a lead late, and he can't use Reed and Familia. No, oh, he's got to get the game there first. <laughs> well, if he can get the game to the eighth, then Levins and Salas are the last two guys he mm. wants to go to. At least that's the game plan. But right now, the tying runs are on base with one out. A little tapper past the mat off the glove of edge and everybody will be safe. Franco held it third and now the bases are loaded. 
It's a base hit for Galvis to load him up. All right. The right, right of your screen is Franco at third. Yeah, I guess he's got to hold up there, Ronnie, a little bit. Down two runs. You know what he could have done, though, Keith? He could have come further down because Reyes went for the ball, too. There's no one to cover third base. You're right. And then you can skedaddle home, but yep. that's asking too much. Well, now Pete McCannon is going to roll out his best right handed pitch hitter, Tommy Joseph, his regular first baseman, to bat for Cody Ashey. And the Mets will respond by bringing in the right hander. Hansel Robles has been warming up. So the wheels continue to turn. Joseph announces the pinch hitter. And Robles coming into the game to face him with the bases loaded and one out, 7 5 New York. We'll be right back. Rolling down. One out in the top of the seventh. A lot more to come. Gabriel and Noah went two innings left for a pinch hitter, and the Mets have been running relief pitchers out there ever since. And Hansel Robles is about to be the sixth Met pitcher after they used ten last night. Well, you, you have the numbers of these guys in the bullpen, so it allows you to kind of manage these type of games. And and to me, you know, you know, you're doing it, trying to do it in a scientific way. But it really feels like I'm going to put a pitcher out there and go until you can't get any outs anymore and we'll try someone else. Well, we were talking in the, in the commercial break is that what I recall in September was you, and particularly in a stretch run, the games were important. You went with your big guns out of the bullpen. Remember, uh, pitchers went deeper. Only five guys in the bullpen back then. Well, There's not. seven now. And the only time you used the guys up from Triple A was when the game was eight nothing or winning or losing. It was a blowout. I got some numbers here okay. from Elias about the use of relievers in the first five months of the season versus September. Back in '86, when you guys played April through August, 3.6 relief pitchers per game, two teams combined, and in September 3.7. So it didn't change much. This year, 6.1 before September 1st, 7.2 after. Hmm. So the, the gap has become greater and teams are taking more advantage of the extra numbers whether that helps them or not I guess is a matter of opinion 7.2 this is the seventh pitcher for the Mets big Tommy, Tommy big. Joseph facing Hansel Robles who misses low and away for ball one this is a huge spot this is a very big game they're all important a two run lead the bases are loaded. Franco at third, Borges the pinch runner at second, Galvis at first. Edge and face one batter through two pitches, gave up the infield hit. And now Robles trying to fight the Mets through this seventh inning. Switching Andres Blanco on deck to pinch hit. Joseph is batting for Ashy in the eighth spot. And Joseph pulls one down to third. Reyes goes to the bag, fires to first, double play, side retired. Edgen gets the ground ball. Reyes with a double play. 5-5-3. Five, five, and the Phillies are turned aside in the top of the seventh. Stretch time. 7-5 New York.
Jackson at first. Roman Quinn moves from right field to left field. Peter Borges, who pinch ran, stays in and right, and Colton Murray stays in the pitch of second inning. Murray got the Mets one, two, three in the sixth. He faces Joannis Cespedes to start at the bottom of the seventh. Mets up seven to five. And Cespedes oh, off the first pitch fastball and lost the bat of the process. SNY's NFL insider Ralph Vacchiano shares his three keys for the Jets to earn a win in Kansas City in his video preview of Sunday's game against the Chiefs. Only on SNY.TV, your online home of all things New York sports. Better grip. Cespedes 0 for 2 in a walk today. He walked in the midst of the Mets' six run fifth inning. It was capped by Michael Conforto's three run homer that right now is the difference in this game. Three infielders stacked on the left side against Cespedes. Granderson on deck, then Kelly Johnson. And the slider on the corner. Nothing in two. We had to shoot some pictures on the field the other day. We were in the dugout, and I was very tempted to lift Cespedes' bat up. I wanted to see the weight of it. But uh, you just can't touch another guy's bats, right? I don't feel like you can. And a foul ball. He stays alive. Now I know that's true with the glove. Is it no, true I, with the bat? Well, I, I, I'm not for a hitter. I'm sure Keith could pick up the bat. I would feel not right as a pitcher touching a bat of a great player. I would. Pitchers touch the bat. Let me tell you, they can take hits out of those things. You don't. You know, you, That's you exactly don't, what I'm saying. Keep your hands off my bat. A hit magnet, drawing the energy out of the wood. I mean, I know it's kind of superstitious, but it's real. If you believe it, it's real, yeah, right? It's like Tinkerbell. Yeah. Clap your hands. It's like if you want to touch bats, go over to the opposing team and touch their bats. Well, he did in his own way when he pitched. That's right. He put holes in their bat. Wow. Oh, boy. Colton Murray pitching to Cespedes ahead of the count one and two. And yeah, that's too high, two and two. And the reason I say that is because when I see Cespedes' bat, it doesn't seem as traditional of a lot of players today with a real, real thin handle. And, and to me, it looks much heavier. Looks like he has that maple la label yeah. on the bat. I mean, I could be wrong, but that just looks like a large piece of lumber. 2 2 coming. And he takes the curveball down. 3 and 2. Well, the Red Sox won their ninth in a row tonight. Wow. They beat Tampa Bay 2 to 1. David Ortiz hit another home run. It's 37. So Boston reduces their magic number to four for clinching the American League East. Going on a tear at just the right time. What a storybook ending for Mr. Ortiz. It's 90 wins now for the Red Sox. Tied for the most in the American League. Toronto's putting a whipping on the Yanks. That's drilled to deep left field. Back toward the fence. And one hop to the wall. Sessman is heads for second. Quinn's throw comes in too late. A bullet of a double for Ioannis Cespedes, his 25th two base hit of the year. Well, we talked about the Phillies playing very shallow outfield, and they've been burned over their heads a few times. And there's one right there. That ball was a rocket, but you got a power hitter here, a guy with 30 home runs. I'm not going to play him shallow. Oh, right down Broadway. <laughs> What's going on? Well. If you hit a rocket, pitching change, Keith. Oh, I wasn't. I was watching the uh, swing here. Well, the third pitcher on both sides tonight who's worked an effective inning and then an ineffective yeah. inning. And so Murray will leave. We'll bring in the lefty to face Curtis Granderson. Seven five Mets in the seventh. We'll be right back.
Mercedes Benz Tri State dealers. Mercedes Benz, the best or nothing. 25 year old lefty Patrick Schuster in to face Curtis Granderson. And throws a slider that misses outside ball one. Well, Schuster comes from the side, is claimed off waivers from the Oakland Athletics, sent to Lehigh Valley, and just recently recalled. Got in five games for the A's earlier this year, now his fourth game with the Phillies. Granderson one for three, drove in a run with a base hit in the fifth inning. And he takes a fastball for a strike. Uh, Patrick Schuster is 25 years old. Yeah. He's already in his seventh different organization. It's mm -hmm. a lot of bouncing around. And then just got to the big leagues this year. Sespin is at second and nobody out. And Granderson lays off the slider. Two and one. He would have a heck of a time against right handers. He's just got to be a. Lefty specialist. Well, the Mets have four lefties in a row coming up: Granderson, Johnson, Conforto, Duda. So the perfect spot for Pete McCann to get a look at Schuster. But he's now behind on Granderson, three and one. Isn't it funny? We've seen three different relievers tonight. Two for the Mets and one for the Phillies have a clean inning of relief, and then come back the next inning. And fall apart. After the Colton Murray gave up the leadoff double to Cespedes after a 1 2 3 6. Here's a fastball strike 3 and 2 to Granderson. Didn't have to be either. Schuster originally drafted by Arizona back in 09, 13th rounder. 3 2 to Granderson. And it gets tied up. Did he hold it? He did. Ball four. And Curtis is on with the walk. Ball almost hit him on the 3 2 count. Close to swinging. Nope. So now it's Kelly Johnson. But Juan Lagares is going to bat for him, and he will un undoubtedly be asked to bunt. Lagares has been taking some batting practice. This is his first plate appearance as coming back from thumb surgery. And um, the understanding that I have is that he's not quite ready to swing the bat yet, but he might be in a few days. But Terry said earlier tonight that if he had a bunting situation, he would use Lagaris, and this would appear to be that spot. And do you think that's why uh, Bobby McClure is out there to let Schuster know that? <sighs> Let's answer our Verizon trivia question. Most walk-off RBIs in Mets history. David Wright? Yep. Oh, there you go. So if you're the Phillies, if you have some inkling that Lagares has to bunt in this spot, would you play the wheel play? I don't know if you play the wheel play, but I'd pinch the corners uh, about 30 feet from him. Lagares' last big league at bat was July 28th, before he had the surgery on his left thumb. I, I would put it. I wouldn't put it on the first strike, Gary. Second strike, I would. Just, just in case. And Lagares gets the bunt down. Rupp's going to go to third with it, and he throws it away. Here comes Cespedes to score. Granderson to third, Lagares to second. Eight to five, New York. Well, a good throw would have had him, but Rupp threw it low. Franco couldn't handle it, and the Mets get a run. Was it that bad of a throw? I mean, I know it was down. It's not a good throw, Ron. Okay. But I hear you. Stepping to his left, yeah. and the ball is to his right. Play. Poor reaction there. This is uh, Pepe Le Pew here. <laughs> They're going to score to sacrifice E2, no RBI. Mm -hmm. And now uh, Eric Campbell's going to bat for Michael Conforto. Who is having mm -hmm. a big night with a double and a three run home, but with a lefty in the game. Campbell will pinch it. The infield comes in. Second and third, nobody out. A run home here in the seventh. Mets lead eight to five. And Campbell drills a base hit to left. 
Granderson scores. Stopping at third is Lagares, and it's 9-5 to five New York. Aaron Campbell, another pinch hit. And he drives in the second run of the inning. There is pushing all the right buttons tonight. Well, infield in. First pitch. Hey, you got a lefty out there. Go to Ripon. So Campbell comes through. Two runs home in the inning. Now T.J. Rivera is announced as the pinch hitter for Lucas Duda. Pete McCannon wants to make sure that Rivera has been announced before he comes out to make a double switch. Nice swinging right there. Well, Schuster was supposed to come in and face four lefties, face one and two righties. He didn't get anybody out. So the Phillies will make a double switch. They'll bring a right hander in with Rivera announced into the game. Andres Blanco will come in as well and we'll take a break. 9 5 Mets in the seventh. We'll be right back. Seventy fifth anniversary by New York Lottery. Take a break from the expected play scratch off games from the New York Lottery. Uh, the all new 2017 Hyundai Elantra. It's not just new, it's better. By Geico, over 75 years of savings and service. And by GMC, see the pros at your tri state GMC dealers. GMC, we are professional grade. Sunday after the Jets Chiefs game, tune to SNY for a complete game breakdown with behind the scenes access. Player reactions and Todd Bowles post game comments on uh, Jets post game live presented by Toyota Sunday immediately after the Jets Chiefs game only on SNY. That's a score twice in the bottom of the seventh. Still nobody out. Phillies will make a double switch. Severino Gonzalez is on to pitch. Pitched in last night's ball game had a couple of strikeouts and an inning of work. He pitched the 10th inning, nearly gave up the game winning home run to Lucas Duda, right. the ball that went six inches foul. Andres Blanco, you see there, he comes in to play first base. So Blanco will go in the nine hole, and the pitcher will hit eighth with Tommy Joseph, who was just into the game, now out of the game. And so it goes. So T.J. Rivera is batting for Lucas Duda, third straight pinch hitter. First two have come through, Lagaris and Campbell. First and third and nobody out. And T.J. fouls back the breaking ball, nothing and one. Rivera had started nine straight games. And until tonight, he went one for five last night. Struck out three of his last four at-bats. And Rivera lines one to center, tagging at third is Lagaris, grabbed by Herrera. Here comes the throw to the plate, and Lagaris arrives safely. A sacrifice fly for T.J. Rivera ends the third run of the inning, and it's 10 to five, New York. Nice at bat by T.J. Keith. Get the ball in play, get it up in the air, get that run in. Five run lead, Granny can't beat you. Stayed in on that slider. 
little roller. Well done. Now Hansel Robles is going to get a rare turn at bat. So the Mets will try and nurse Robles into the eighth with their bullpen shorthanded. Now with a five run lead. And not bunting on the first pitch. Here comes Tuffle. He's going to have a little, little tutorial on the signs. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, when I. When I go to the belt, that's supposed to be a bunch. Robles says, hey, listen, I haven't been up all year. What do you want from me? 0 for 2 in his major league career with no sacrifices. He was 0 for 2, 0 for 5 in his minor league career with two sacrifice bunts. And now he got the side. In Robles' is, uh, well, no, it's not in Robles' defense. Yes, it is. Okay. It's just that he's in the on-deck circle. You just have one of the coaches say, you're bunny. Just to be safe. Because you never know with a pitcher, particularly the relievers. <laughs> well, these guys don't bat very often. Starters are used to the signs, they hit. Relievers don't hit that much. Campbell at first and one out, three runs home in the inning. And Robles stabs at it and misses two and one. The bat is the hand fell off the bat. Is that bad? That's uh, not good. Not good, Gary. Watch the right hand. A little hard card. And that's fouled off. Ball running in on him. Two and two. Rene Rivera batting in the ninth spot in the batting order is on deck. Well, the pinch hitter is coming through for Terry Collins here in the seventh. Lagaris pinch hit for Kelly Johnson, got the sacrifice bunt down. Mm. Eric Campbell pinch hit for Conforto, got an RBI hit. TJ Rivera pinch hit for Lucas Duda and had a sacrifice fly. The joys of the 13 man bench. And Robles strikes out for the second out. So now he's 0 for 3 in his major league career. I'm just looking at the lines for Robles all season long. Remember, he went through a stage there where he was kind of a long man. He had two innings of work, three and two thirds, two and two thirds, two innings of work, four consecutive outings like that. That's after he'd fallen into a slump and it seemed to get him back yeah. on course. There's Rene Rivera batting for the third time. Rivera came into this game in the fifth inning. He singled off the wall in the fifth. He fouled out in the sixth, and now he's getting a bat in the seventh. Doesn't usually work that way in the ninth spot in the order. And the breaking ball off the play from Gonzalez, 2 0. Oh. First run of this inning is charged to Colton Murray. The other two charged to Patrick Schuster. Gonzalez, the third pitcher of the inning. To the fourth hour of this game, and we're in the seventh inning. Whatever it takes, Gary. Well, all these games are of utmost importance to the Mets, and you know, from, as far as they're concerned, if it takes six hours, that's okay. The runner goes, fly ball out to right. But these September games have become absolute slogs with these expanded rosters, more so than in any year I can remember. Mets add three runs in the bottom of the seventh. We go to the eighth. Mets lead at ten to five.
Cabrera who pinch it stays in its second. Matt Reynolds replaces us dribble Cabrera at shortstop. That is not a uh, double switch or anything. That's just Cabrera coming out of the game. Perhaps a little shaken up. Juan Magaris pinch it stays in the game in center and Curtis Granderson moves from center to right. And Hansel Robles who finished off the seventh will stay on for the eighth. And facing Andres Blanco up for the first time and he takes a strike. Blanco came in on a double switch the last half inning. Now playing first base. Robles came in to get a double play grinder from Tommy Joseph to end the seventh. At the time, the Mets had a two run lead. It was a huge double play. And now the Mets with a five run lead after adding three runs, one of them unearned in the bottom of the seventh. Boy, Robles could really save the bullpen if he has one of those extended outings. Well, here's how this inning is going to set up. Robles is going to face the first three hitters, but if it gets to Odubel Herrera, Jerry Blevins is up in the bullpen. Well, get the first three. One, two coming. And Blanco fishing for the changeup. And that's the first out. One out and nobody on in the top of the eighth. Sunday on Mets Insider. It's the final push. Take a look back at the struggles, the injuries, and the rebounds the Mets have had to endure this season in order to spot in the playoff chase. On Mets Insider, presented by W.B. Mason, Sunday at 4:30 only on SNY. <laughs> Coming up tonight after the post game, Geico Sports Night. All the wild card news, including the latest on the Giants in San Diego. Slapped to short by Hernandez. Reynolds with the off balance throw. Scoop attempt. And Campbell doesn't come up. A no scoop for soup. And Hernandez safe. Rivera puts a tag on him just in case, but he didn't take the turn. Well, he had him with a good throw. Got nothing on it. Came up a charge. little bit. They're going to charge an error on Reynolds on that play. So the Mets' first error of the night. The Phillies have made two. And now Roman Quinn, who's gone two for four tonight and driven in a run. Another switch hitter for Robles to face. Herrera on deck. Levins in the bullpen ready for him. That's driven to right field. On comes Granderson, and he picks it for the second out. So Quinn is retired, and there are two away. And let's see what Terry does here. He's uh, Herrera coming up. Staying at his perch. No, with a five run lead, I guess he feels he can afford to. Absolutely. I mean, you'd love, thank goodness, you would love Robles to finish this game if you could. Well, as you mentioned, he's had those long outings this year and been successful with them. Terry shouting encouragement to his catcher, I believe. Herrera's one for three in a walk tonight. And the fastball in for a strike. That's have used six pitchers tonight. They used ten pitchers last night. Trying to steal a game without their top two relievers. And when you score ten runs, that makes that a little bit easier to do. I should say without their top two relievers and without a Front line starting pitcher. Well, I think you, all of us were saying, though, you just score 10 runs, makes it easy. Well, they had a similar circumstance in Inouye's first start on Sunday. They didn't have Reed and Familia for that game. Played an offbeat lineup and won. Squeaked one by the Twins 3 to 2, with Levins getting the save. Herrera fights one off, and it's 1 and 2. Toronto has won. So the Blue Jays stay in the first wild card in the American League. Detroit has won, so they stay in the second wild card spot. The Orioles, who were a half game behind Detroit, are still playing 2 2 with Arizona in the 11th. Matt Wieters tied that game with a ninth inning home run. Robles ahead 1 and 2. And Herrera strikes out on the high fastball. And Hansel Robles has his second strikeout. Side retired. 
Robles works around the air 10 5 New York in the eighth. Eighth inning, Jose Reyes leads off. It's a score of 10 runs tonight, but Reyes is 0 for 4. And he takes a strike from Severino Gonzalez. It'll be Reyes, then Matt Reynolds, and Yuena Cespedes for the Mets. We've had two big innings tonight. Reyes pops one up, might be playable for Rupp. Back to the screen, and enough room to make the catch. And Reyes now 0 for 5. One out. Not a hard play for Rupp, but he did everything perfectly. Threw the helmet away, got all the way back to the netting, and that ball drifted back into play, and he was ready for it. Now Matt Reynolds will bat for the first time as Dribble Cabrera, remember, fouled the ball off his right knee earlier in the game, and of course he's been struggling with his left knee. Had to make a sliding stop as he came around third base, running the bases earlier in the game. So whatever the issue Cabrera not playing the last two innings and Reynolds is starting to become that night in the Monty Python skit everything happening to him and he still keeps going just a flash going. <laughs> Come on. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> I have a visual I just very tight. I can't. Oh forget it back to the game. <laughs> Reynolds one of the few players that didn't get into last night's game. That's used 27 players last night which set a franchise record. Well they're underway in San Diego late start at Padres at 740 Friday night start in San Diego. Edwin Jackson pitching for the Padres. And the Mets hoping that Jackson pitches well. Mets and Giants started the night tied for the top two wild card spots. Reynolds pops one up. And Hernandez waiting for it. Two out. We've talked so much about the three way tie possibility. The two way tie possibility is easy. If the Mets and Giants tie for the top two spots, the Mets get the number one wild card spot and the home game because they won the season series from the Giants. And Frisco will have to go to St. Louis. If they tie, if they tie, but yeah. But if they tie, okay, good. If the Mets and Cardinals tied for the top two spots and the Giants are out of it, then the Cardinals would host the That's wild right. card game. Right. The team split the season series, but the Cardinals would have the better 
division record. And that game is on Wednesday. The American League wild card game is first on Tuesday. Here's Cespedes, one for three in a walk. Eight games to go after tonight. And the Cardinals have two more to play at Wrigley Field yes. after getting shut out by Jake Arrieta and the Cubs this afternoon. And the, you know, the Cubs have some things to play for, even though they've clinched the division. They've not yet clinched home field throughout the playoffs, although they're close. But they also want to get to 100 wins. And I think also from Joe Madden's comments, he believes very strongly in playing his best against the contenders. And then he'll rest people the final week when he's playing non contenders. There's nobody up in the Mets bullpen, so it may be that Hansa Robles is going back to the mound for the ninth inning. He's already worked an inning in two thirds. Two and one to Cespedes. Two and two. Well, if the Mets hold on tonight, game started by Montero, Gazelman, Lugo, and Inoa, the Mets record, not the pitcher's record, the Mets record in those games will be 12 and 5. You'll take that. That's amazing. It's amazing. It speaks to how well those guys have fared. Mm -hmm. It speaks to how well the team has rallied around them. How well the bullpen has fared in many of those games. Well, just think in terms of their 17 games. Suppose, suppose they went uh, one game over 500. The Mets aren't in it. And Cespedes is down on strikes to end the inning, so Gonzalez retires six in a row in relief. But the Mets three outs away from a win, 10 to 5, as we go to the ninth. Ninth inning, Hansel Robles trying to finish this game out. Throws a first pitch strike to Michael Franco. Franco's two for three and a walk and a home run back in the third inning. The Phillies at the time had a three to one lead. And he fouls one off his leg, nothing and two. The pitcher of record in this game for the Mets is Josh Smoker, even though he gave up a two run homer to Darren Ruff. He was in the game when the Mets took the lead with a six run fifth. Robles, if he finishes this game out, would have his first major league save. He came into a seven to five game. His last save came in 2011 pitching for Kingsport in the Appalachian League. He had two saves in his minor league career. There's nobody up behind Robles in the Mets bullpen so he is being asked 
to close this out. And Franco lifts one to deep right center field back in the gap. Lagaris runs it down. Remember that? The gold glove of Juan Lagaris for the first down. Well, covers a lot of ground. We're used to this. A piece of cake for Juan. It's just so stark, though, when you see other players play at center field and they're giving their best, and he just, I don't know, makes it look easy. He's got that bandage on that left thumb that was surgically, re surgically repaired, but strong enough to close that glove and make the grab to help out Robles. Now, Jimmy Paredes will be the pinch hitter batting for. The pitcher now for Borges, right? Yeah, Borges. Borges. <laughs> Keeping track of a scorecard. Oh, well, I'm going to be very neat. It is just crazy. All right, let me see. To my green ink. Think about the umpires having to keep track. I mean, what they oh. write down really matters. What we write down is <laughs> only for our own edification. Paredes is a switch hitter, hitting 228 for the year. Likes to pull the ball. And the Mets put three infielders on the right side. And Paredes takes a home run cut with his team down by five runs. SNY Super Slow Motion is brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State Dealers. Mercedes Benz, the best or nothing. And Robles has gotten six outs and thrown only 16 pitches. And he gets ahead on Paredes, 0 and 2. Gabriel Noah went two innings. Logan Verrett went two innings. Josh Smoker an inning. Eric Goodell an inning and a third. Josh Edgen faced one batter. And now Robles trying to finish it up. And he strikes out Paredes for the second out. Third strikeout in relief for Hansel Robles. After we're done here, it's WB Mason post game live. Gary Apple, Jim Duquette will be in the chairs. Giving you all the highlights, the interviews, the analysis, the stuff. In the chairs. Never heard it that way before. Very good, Gary. They do sit. <laughs> Sounds important. Phillies are down to their final out. Cameron Rupp, the batter. And takes a slider for a strength. If the Mets win tonight, they clinch a winning season. It would be their 82nd victory of the year. And they guarantee themselves to be in the top spot in the wild card when the night ends. In the air to left field, this should do it. Cespedes in. And the ball game is over. Hansel Robles gets his first major league save, going the final two and two thirds. Michael Conforto with a big three run homer in the Mets' six run fifth. And the Mets beat the Phillies for the second straight night, 10 to 5. Where do we start? Uh, you go. Oh, geez, I mean, it's a big night for the Mets. I bought a gift. Two errors by the Phillies. The Mets took advantage of the errors. They're doing what they had to do. They're making up for that sweep of the, Bra the Braves here. They bounced back last night with a big win, and they carried over tonight. They got 10 runs on 10 hits, took advantage of bad, a poor Philly play, and they got another W on the board. And as far as the pitching is concerned, I can't say enough about Hansel Robles. He didn't know if the caravan of pitchers was going to continue, and he just put a stopper in the faucet. Well, the Mets are now a game and a half in front of the Cardinals, and for the moment, a half game in front of the Giants, who just got started in their game in San Diego. Tonight's game summary presented by Sleepy's. Big night for Conforto, a double and a three run homer as the Mets smoke the Phillies 10 to 5 for their 82nd win of the year. For every Mets win, the Mets organization is proud to contribute $2,500 to Northwell Health and the Katz Institute for Women's Health. For more information, visit NorthwellHealth.com slash KIWH. This win brings the total contribution so far this season to $205,000. Tomorrow night, with game three of this series, Sean Gilmartin will get his first start of the year for the Mets with Noah Syndergaard suffering from strep throat. Alec Asher, who was suspended for the first half of the year, will pitch for the Phillies. Well, when we're done here, we'll head to WB Mason post game live. But first, if you have 
been a fan of the Mets on SNY over the last 11 years. You've often heard the name Bill Webb, who was our esteemed director, the greatest baseball director in history. Bill's been working through some health problems over the last month, so he hasn't been with us since the middle of August. He's resting up right now, getting set to do the World Series on Fox. But Bill is the best there's ever been. We love him to death. Bill, this is for you. He's the one that broke me into business. He's the best at what he does. How many Emmys does he have? He'll be the first one to tell you. I think it's over 40. I was very fortunate to break in with someone like him in the truck. I will always hear Bill's mantra that nothing is more important than the game. The game comes first. Nothing's more important within the game than the confrontation between the pitcher and batter. Mm. Got him looking. We've had an incredible amount of laughs in the 11 years that we've worked together, and I would not trade it for anything. The relationship between Bill and his camera people is unbelievable. They would run through a wall for him because he treats them like family. Cindy and his kids, Matt, Sammy, and Aaron, they sacrificed a lot because Bill wasn't always around. Bill, Bill spent a lot of time on the road, and um, I'm grateful to them because I got to share that time with Bill. The perspective that he shared with me is just something I'll never, um, I'll never forget. For all that he is as a director, and as great as he is at that, and for all he did to help me in my career, I just think he is he's a great friend. He's been our quarterback for 11 seasons. And Bill, I appreciate all of your loyalty, your dedication. We've been lucky to have you. Thank you, Betty. I think we're all kind of creatures of others that put us together, you know, kind of mold us. And he's not. He's just an original person, original thinker, and, um, and the best director of television um, in the history of the game.